YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We got an X-Fly, serious, seriously 80 millimeters. Seriously. Okay, we have set up the flaps. We have AS3X, we have safe. We have 5000 6S right to the front of the strap. AR637TA, we could put the beep, beep, boop, boop on there, but we're not gonna do that because it drives my wife nuts. Look at these sweet landing gear. They are so strong, I'm excited to see this. We are gonna do some back taxiing to see how it handles on the ground. We're gonna waste a little bit of precious flight time for that. Oh man, that thing blows good. Take off flaps there. We are in AS3X mode right now. Okay, we just cut the grass last night, so we're gonna see how this does real quick in the grass, because we know some of you guys are gonna be asking. Oh yeah, it does good. So we're gonna taxi. Actually, I'm gonna not waste any more power. We're gonna put it at the end of the driveway and start. Okay, so the back wheels are just off the edge of the runway for extra speed. Here we go. Oh, that thing rolled so fast. Wow. Need a little bit more stabilization. Okay, out of the flaps. There go the gear. Oh, it's so good so far. Guys, I got the nerves. I got the nerves. Look at those LEDs, beautiful. So far well, well behaved, a little bit of elevator issue. Got to trim down quite a bit. There we go. There we go, she's flying flat and level. 50% throttle here. Okay, here we go, full throttle. Oh yeah, she looks good. That's about 40% elevator. Man, she's flying rock solid. Little extra. A little extra oscillation there on the ailerons. We're gonna have to turn down, listen. Oh, that's seriously cool. Oh, so good, so good. I'm getting the feel for it. These plug and flies take a second. Love the sound. Okay, so let's try a pass Let's see how it responds with takeoff flaps. Takeoff flaps. Landing flaps. Oh man, I think we got lucky on our setup. Man, that slows down nicely. Seriously nicely. Okay, here we go. This is takeoff flap, oh excuse me, landing flaps down. Still moving at a pretty good pace, full throttle there. Oh man, look at the sun. That is so freaky awesome. Okay, so I am going to try the takeoff flaps. I wanna just see how this does, okay? Full landing flaps, let's see how it slows down. Into the power. Okay guys. I'm feeling, I'm feeling okay. I want to try touch and go. Do you see that sun? Yeah. How awesome it looks. So weird. That is so cool. There's clouds in front of it. Okay, landing flaps coming down. Okay, camera crew, you good? Yeah. You sure? Yep. Oh my goodness. Okay, so. I found the stall point. <laughs> it was where I had tried to turn. I was thinking that might happen. We are 14 seconds away from our four minutes. We are not gonna push this thing even though we have warnings. Got the countdown from the British lady. Gear coming down, takeoff flaps, landing flaps. Almost no throttle, just a little teeny bit to keep it from being sitting still totally. And I didn't like it. Guys, you can always go around until you can't. And I'm feeling good because we have a warning at 20.4. That's a telemetry warning. Just being nice and gentle. We're gonna get this thing down in one piece, no problem. We got this, full landing flaps. Okay, here we go. I know where it stalls. I know what I'm doing now. I need to turn up my gains a little teeny bit on the ailerons too. 
Here we go. Keep it level. Keep it level. Flare. Flare. Whoop! 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 <laughs> She's got a little bit of speed on her. Okay. Well, it's on the ground. Yep. It's in one piece. Yep. Let's assess. <laughs> so, guys, a couple things. First things first. She did good on that landing. The grass really helped slow it down. Let's go ahead and show you one thing. Okay, first things first. I need this right now. Forward programming, I'm setting the gains up. You see where we are? We're a little bit higher, but I don't want the ailerons to overcorrect. Okay, so it's gonna set. Okay, so, whoops, I did it in the wrong spot. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay, so I need to turn the roll down just a hair, like that. What that's gonna do, well, hold on, could they even see? Mm -hmm. They could? Mm -hmm. Okay, I turned it down to 30. I turned it down to 30 from 40. Okay, so what that does is, when I turn the master gain up, then that's gonna give me the ability then to keep that from getting over correcting. Okay, so let's also walk into this menu, 22.5 on the ground right now. Four minutes is very conservative, okay? So if you're going on a timer on a 5000 Gen 1 6S 50C pack, I wasn't really pushing it too hard, but I'll tell you what, I felt like we were closer than we probably were. Also, we're out of the throttle now. 20, what did we set it to 20.4 for the alarm? Mm -hmm. So let's see if it'll taxi here. Ah, we're gonna just end up in the tall grass. Okay, so let's check for damage too. I think we're good. Elevator, rudder, ailerons, flaps, flaps. Okay, okay. It's always scary the first time you fly a plug and fly that you really like. And guys, that did just fine. Yeah. That did just fine. There's like nothing going on with the mounts. They're all solid. Everything looks good. The wings didn't break. Got a little bit of flexiness here, it looks like, but that's actually was there before, I think, now that I think of it. So let's go over here and let's see how it taxis. That is a telltale sign that you beat the crap out of your landing gear, like I may have done. But let's see how this does. Okay, throttle cuts off. Oh yeah, that is awesome. We did not kill the landing gear. That is such a good feeling, folks. Look at this. We're doing just fine. Okay, I'm gonna show you hands off here once I get it turned. Look at that, hands off, okay? That, that is amazing, guys. This landing gear is strong, so I'm very happy. We're getting another flight, we're gonna switch batteries and come right back. Okay, so we're just gonna check this real quick so you can see where we were, okay? That was perfectly fine where it was. Let's show you the full telemetry once we, or not telemetry, but we're gonna show you the full voltage and it's gonna give you guys an idea of what we actually have going on here. By the way, these straps are super nice. They're really, really easy to use. The cavity for the battery is super huge and you don't have to worry about pushing your batteries into everything because it was like well-engineered. You can tell that they did a good job of setting this up. Okay, so now we're just gonna stuff this in here. It's a little warm. I'm not gonna lie, that battery is warm. Okay, we're at 28%, 29% and feel that. No yeah. puff, but it's hot. It's toasty. Oh, do we have any more data? I'm not gonna mess with it because it's not smart data. So anyway, all right, so we're good on that. I think that was a reasonable flight. I'm gonna give the camera crew the battery and the XPC, and then we're gonna go ahead and load this 100C pack this time. We don't typically fly on 100C packs because they're just kind of, you know, they're just like not really attainable. People don't usually buy 100C packs for airplanes. They might for other things like quads and whatnot, but her helis, helis are battery killers. Okay, so we're gonna just pull that tight. I really like the straps or the, the correct length for once. We almost never get that. And it makes it so much easier to put a battery in. Look at that, solid, okay? And then we put the telemetry sensor in. You guys can follow along and watch our build if you wanna see how we did it. It was super simple. Just so you know, off camera, while my camera crew was grabbing the battery, I did have the AS3X relearn. I 
I had the AS3X relearn the gyro settings, okay? Relearn the positions. And the way you do that, I'm going to clear my timer quick. Is you scroll down to forward programming, connect. Then you go into the AS3X settings once it loads. Gyro settings, AS3X settings. And then you can go to the uh, capture gyro gains, okay? You can go in here and adjust them. But then you have to capture them at some point and that'll capture based on previous settings and things like that. So anyway, I think we're gonna be good. I've got the gain set back to the center as well, okay? So that gives us an out up and an out down. That's what we were talking about earlier. The sun is over the horizon, but we have this nice twilight. You wanna show the people the sun. And we're gonna dial in the takeoff flaps and go back to our start position. We should have good enough lighting. The LEDs are phenomenal on this plane. They're very bright, but this is an opaque finish. So you're not gonna see both lights at the same time. That's one big drawback. I would like to see some white forward facing lights or maybe a white tail light. Okay, throttle cuts off. We're ready to fly. Takeoff flaps dialed in. I'm not on the edge of the runway this time because we rolled easy. Full throttle. Look at that. Out of the flaps. Oh man, she's flying solid. That's full throttle, folks. Full throttle, full throttle. Look at that thing, that's fast. It doesn't look it because it's so speedy. Yes, awesome. Very solid, look how solid it is. And I love the scream. Okay, so just so you guys know, I'm trying to compare this to another plane. Here, it's take off flaps. I feel like this flies a lot like the Futura just faster. That's 20, 30% throttle. There's 10% no throttle. Landing flaps. Oh man. Oh, it's so predictable. I'm loving it. It's very easy to fly. Not easy like Habu easy, guys. Don't hear me wrong. Okay, high speed pass, you good? Yep. Good? Yep. Oh man, we have those gains dialed in beautifully. Is that a word? Nope. Didn't think so. Out of the throttle, testing safe. Safe mode, no hands. Okay, limited bank angles, limited pitch and roll angles. I got a coordinated turn here with safe and you'll notice it's wide. I'm not all the way to the edge of the sticks. And look at that thing, it flies fine on safe. Nothing. Okay, so we'll try nothing for a second. Okay, so here's no stabilization whatsoever. It is calm, full disclosure, guys. Flying really nice. I like the feeling of AS3X. I like the way it's locked in and I don't have to worry about things outside of my control doing weird things to my plane. I'm out of the throttle going overhead this time. You good? Mm -hmm. I love the screen. It's so cool. Okay, so we have a minute 54 on four. Four has been proven to be a safe limit. I want to try for some approaches this direction. Full landing flaps coming in. Battery's in the same position, but the 100C is actually just a touch lighter than the 50C for some weird reason. Look at that beautiful thing into the throttle, very responsive, out of the takeoff, or out of the landing and into the takeoff. Gear still down, and let's see how we do on a climb. Definitely not unlimited vertical, but pretty good. I think the Futura is a little bit better on unlimited vertical, if you wanna call it that. I think this plane might be just a touch heavier. It's very well put together, super easy assembly. Nine screws came in the nut sack, and we only needed eight. Maybe that's why it's flying weird, just kidding. <laughs> Oh man, that thing will do the G's too. I just have been so reluctant to pull on it hard. I've been trying to be nice and fly it fast like a fast plane would go. But guys, I can tell you one thing from experience, this plane is rock solid right now and I'm loving it. The AS3X and SAFE are making it fly really nice, but I think this plane would fly nice even without it. I'm just not a skilled enough pilot to really do it and enjoy it. I, I kind of have the jitters tonight. This is just one of those times where, okay. Okay, we're gonna try this here. Keeping that nose from popping on me. 
Oh, we're going around. That was lame. Guys, I love it when a jet has enough juice to get me out of trouble, like on a bad landing. Let's try this. Timer's coming up. Oh man, this plane does carry a lot of inertia and uh, that's just kind of the way it is. I'm not sure why it feels that way. Maybe it's just the nerves. I always get nervous with the new plane. Full landing flaps coming down. We're gonna put this thing down and try to get you guys a gorgeous landing. And then I'll scream like a little girl if it's terrible or if it's good. You guys know how I do it. Just a little bit of kiss of throttle. Oh man, I thought I had it perfect. I was so was close. So close. I was in ground effect and it just lifted. Now, I'm not out of battery or anything like that. I just want to show you guys this. The telemetry on here is super nice. Look at that, 22.3. We could have easily done two to three go arounds and I think we would have been ew, struggling on the third, but I think this thing, this thing definitely has some legs under it. It's got power. It's not unlimited vertical. I was hoping it would be a little bit more juicy on the up, especially in a 100 C pack. But I can tell you this, it's definitely got a lot of speed. It's fast, it looks good, it flies good. I like the way the AS3X pairs up with it. Obviously the NX8 did great. Uh, the Smart Pack did great. I'm curious to see what would happen if we juice it up with a different pack. We left the stock EC5 in there. And so if we decide to change that into uh, a different pack, we should be allowed, you know, should be no problem. Um, obviously the IC5s work with the EC5s and uh, we just don't have any smart telemetry on the ESC in this case. So thrust reverse would be pretty sweet on this plane actually, because I bet it would slow down a lot better. Uh, it seems like it does grass okay. I'm never a big fan of putting down a new jet in grass just in case I hit one of our potholes over here, mm -hmm. because who's in charge of the uh, grounds maintenance uh, over here? That'd be you. Oh me, that's right. Okay, so in conclusion guys, is the plane good? Uh, yeah, it's good, it's good. Is it an easy assembly? Yes, it is very easy. Now, is it easy on the plug and fly? It's no more easy or hard than any other plug and fly we've done. We didn't do anything super sophisticated. I can tell you one thing that we ran into in the assembly was a little bit of difficulty getting the plugs for the horizontal stabilizer elevator. As it's going in, we had a little bit of trouble, so we yanked down the line and pulled it back into the cavity. That was literally the only problem we had with assembly. Super impressed with the build on this. Super impressed with the packaging, really good packaging. I uh, had a big old gouge out of the side of the box and it didn't even make it through. It was all superficial and it was like that deep. So good job packaging this. X-Fly guys, if this is what you're putting out, it's gonna be some good stuff. I'm excited, it's gonna be good. I love it and I know huge, it's huge. That being said, this plane, where does it suffer? It's very fast on landings, but that could be me and I'm being very conservative. Now, that being said, you saw I was in ground effect and it still wanted to tip on me, okay? That, that could be resolved by two factors. One, getting the speed right, getting the flare right, and settling into a flare with a, a, an approach like this instead of coming in level. I like to fly my planes level in landing. Uh, call it a fatal flaw. It's just what I'm used to. I like to fly them in with big landing flaps. We could go a little bit more. We're only at 30% down on the flaps. So we could barn door those even more, probably get a little extra drag. It would definitely help on landings. We did not set up curl on this because there's a mixing board in there. And uh, honestly, even if there wasn't a mixing board, we probably could have done curl uh, either direction. We just chose not to. Curl might be kind of cool on this plane, to be honest. It does carry a lot of speed when you're coming into landings. So just something to keep in mind. Now, if you have a big runway, should be no problem. But I can tell you this, we did land it on this runway. I would consider that a landing, even though we rolled off into the tall grass. That's mm -hmm. not a big problem. It's not damaged. Let's go double check. Okay. While we're walking, we'll talk. Now, let's compare that against the competitive brand uh, F-16 with an 80 millimeter EDF. This one, um, I think, I like, I'm a sucker for scale planes and I do have favorites. I love the F-16, 80 millimeter. You guys can figure out who makes it because we reviewed it. But that being said, this 80 millimeter is equally as good flying but it probably lands a little bit easier, okay? Now, that being said, it lands a little bit easier because it has flaps, okay? The F-16 doesn't have flaps. We set it up with flap runs, but we lost a little bit of our performance on the S3X as a result. Now, I think that this plane could be made to land easier. I think our CG is really good right now. I'm gonna show you the CG where we have the battery, and then I'll demonstrate by opening it. You guys already saw it at setup. 
We are just, I would say just nose heavy on the back hole and definitely tail heavy on the front hole. 140 to 145, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and look where my battery is. You have tons of room to move it back. You can also go up to the front. We have room to move both ways. If you want this thing to fly ultra stable and you don't have a stabilizer, put the battery forward, you're gonna struggle to land the thing without taking a mile long runway, okay? Also, look at these landing gear. Look at these. Let's just prove that it's not broken by running it up and down for some taxiing. That's a great way to test if your landing gear are robust enough to handle Brian Phillips landings. Okay, so we'll just set it down here. We'll show you if it goes straight. This is totally out of the blue. Let's hope it goes straight, otherwise we're gonna look stupid. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Safe, safe's on, just kidding. I'm on the ground. <laughs> So I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I would like to see some forward facing lights on a jet this fast. Does, does it need the, the LEDs uh, to be able to be flyable? Absolutely not. Are they bright? Can you see them from the front? I don't know, you be the judge of that. You can definitely see them. What I'm concerned about is on a night like this. Oh man, look at the moon coming out. That's so cool. We had beautiful moon, beautiful sun. What I'm concerned about is you're flying above this blue, right? You drop that plane down, you've got that silhouette. You're flying over here with the sunset. You, you drop down below these trees, you're gonna lose sight of your plane if you don't have LEDs. Even if it's a great plane, even if it's yellow, even if it's white, it doesn't matter. That silhouetting effect will disappear as soon as you drop over the tree line. That's why those LEDs are definitely necessary. And by the way, any manufacturers that's not putting LEDs on planes, you need to start rethinking that because the legislation is gonna force it anyway. So you might as well just start doing it. So loving the way this thing taxis, loving the way it rolls, loving the way it flies. I mean, it rolled probably halfway halfway from where we were. Well, maybe it's, let's call it 70 feet. 70 feet on hard yep. surface and it rolled, okay? And you can tell it's got plenty of power. I was full throttle, but I always am with EDFs. Um, does it sound good? I think it maybe sounds a little bit less good than some of the other 80 millimeters. I don't know why that is. I think the 12 beta fan is great. It produces a lot of thrust, but it maybe doesn't have the, the same swoosh as some of the other ones. But again, not a big factor. I'm not super worried about that. I was a little bit disappointed by the overall ups, verticals. I felt uh, the verticals were a little bit lacking. Now, that being said, you could fly it with a smaller pack. That's a pretty good flight time for an EDF jet, like four and a half, five minutes. And I, I am conservative with my jets on flight times uh, because I've lost a few because I pushed them too far, just so you guys know. Um, I like the way this thing handles in the air. I feel like with the AS3X paired up, it's, it's actually quite easy to fly. I'm just nervous still. So that being said, if you have a long enough runway, just like many other jets we've uh, reviewed, and when I say jets, I'm not talking about anything that's an EDF. I'm talking about like, this is a jet, okay? An EDF plane is an EDF plane. You know, I don't, I don't think of a, a Cessna Longitude UMX as, as, a, as a jet, even though it is a jet. Um, th this is a jet, okay? It's not a fighter, but it's a jet, okay? Uh, and it flies as such. It flies fast, it flies hard. And I don't know that I gave any input to any of the control surfaces uh, at any point more than about 50 to 60%, okay? So maybe that speaks to needing a little extra expo and then I could be a little bit more comfortable flying it. Uh, it feels rock solid, it goes straight as an arrow. And to be honest, it's just fast. And so when it goes straight, you're like, oh, okay, what's coming up? So I think, when you have a fast flying jet and you're nervous to fly it, sometimes that impacts the way that you fly it. Like you wanna be careful. You don't wanna get into a stall configuration. So I think we could probably push this plane a lot harder, but I don't wanna do it without better lighting. So I think what's in store for this plane would obviously be a second thoughts video. So we will be coming back with the second thoughts, but we wanted to get this out as soon as possible. This plane's been released for a while, but we wanted you to see our take on it. Others have reviewed it. We don't know what they said because we don't have time to watch everybody else's reviews. But I can tell you this, the Sirius is a good plane. It's solid built, easy build, uh, paired up with a good receiver, good transmitter of your choosing. And I think you're gonna be very satisfied with it. Um, I, think, I think that you're gonna like it. I think it's gonna be very fast. So you need to remember, this is not a beginner plane, not even close, okay? I would say that this is um, intermediate to experienced, somewhere in there. And that's, that's pretty much what I am. So I would say that this plane is not maybe at the top of my limits, but it's, it's getting, a, getting close, you know, to the top of the limits. 
I would say between this and like the SU-30 was one of the planes that really pushed me because we didn't have flaps and we had a short runway and at that time I was trying to run it on the runway. I did okay on the grass though. So this thing will definitely do better on grass uh, than for instance like the Viper Jet. That's a 70 millimeter. Uh, inferior on power, probably flies a little bit better. Uh, it's uh, a little bit faster looking because of the size to EDF ratio, but the landing gear on that will not perform in the grass at all. Once you get in the grass, you're screwed. Um, so you have to basically land it and take off from a, a hard surface. This thing would probably do grass fine. Uh, you don't want super tall grass because you get a lot of drag from that, but you could definitely fly it out of taller grass. Not that tall of grass because that's hay, but this grass, yeah, for sure. If it's well manicured, no problem. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a Viper Jet. You could probably fly that from a well manicured lawn, but it would have to be like really nice, like golf course nice. This could do our, you know, what is this like the moon? The moon. Yeah, you should yeah. see me mow. I about fall out. <laughs> um, okay, so final in closing thoughts. Anything camera crew you can think of that I didn't say? I don't think so. I feel like there's just there's something that's simple about it that makes it good. Like the assembly was easy. I don't know. I'm I thought it was cool. I think it's well done. I mm -hmm. think the things that they put their time and effort and money into were well executed. So I feel like sometimes these models we get. They'll, uh, the manufacturers will spend a lot of time on details that really don't matter. And then they leave out details that we really demand, like LEDs and flaps. Mm -hmm. I mean, retracts, pretty much everybody's doing retracts. Uh, but the thing is, when you get retracts that are inferior, it can really ruin a model. I mean, we've had multiple Dynams where it's like, hey, if the retracts were good, this would be a great plane. Right. Um, even though the build was terrible. Well, the build on this one was literally in the minutes. I mean, they said 20 minutes in the manual, and I think uh, a motivated person could probably do it in 20 minutes, but it's a plug and fly. You just spend a lot more time on the radio setup. Also, I feel like the inlets might be letting this, uh, starving it a little bit. So if a guy got this and he wanted to make it way faster, I think that a bigger cheater might be in order, but I mean, I felt like it flew good. You had plenty of power. It was You were never lacking for power when you needed it. I just felt like there could be a little bit more ups if there was a little bit more through. So. I don't know, RC Geek did a thrust tube for me on the Rafale. I wonder if we could get away with something like that. But there's also this little ring here, this little recess. That could be convenient for something later on. That's all plastic too. Yeah. And by the way, plastic in all the right spots so you can grab it and hold it without it falling apart on you. Super easy DB9 connectors on here. So you can take this wing off and it takes about two seconds. There's literally two screws on each side. And it's not the type of screws where it's like for two minutes. No, it's like you, you just basically put it together. It's super easy. You undo it. It's very easy. It works well. It's all the things that we want from all of our different brands that we work with. We don't always get. I can't tell what the amp rating is on the EST, but it is in the manual. Mm -hmm. So guys, X-Fly model. This is something new for us. We're excited to bring it to you. We are excited to fly some new stuff that they've got coming. Brand new, early release style. This thing's already been out for a little bit, and I think there's some good things to come from X, uh, from X Fly, and we're gonna be here to share it with you. Obviously, if you haven't already, check the links below. You can buy this thing for your very own. We'll link to it. You'll be supporting our channel if you buy it. We'll link to the NX6, NX, excuse me, NX8 in this case. We'll link to the AR637TA, or excuse me, T in this case. And we will also link to the AR631, which would have been perfectly appropriate for this plane. Uh, we go through the exhaustive build and setup. Uh, following this video right now. And if you wanna watch and follow along and set up your very own, if you end up getting the 631 instead of the um, 637, then there's only one step that's extra here. And that is for the telemetry on the pack. You can see we've got that weird red and black wire that goes in. We'll show you how to install that. And if you get the 631, you won't need that, but you also wanna have the telemetry. P.S. We never hit our low voltage warnings. We never hit our audio events which would be a warning that would have populated every 15 seconds, the British chick would have came on and gave us an update of the status of the pack. So we never did hear that. Um, also, what else did we not hear? We didn't hear this thing crashing, that's always convenient. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't hear it getting uh, bogged down in the grass. We didn't hear it dragging a bunch of stuff. Look how clean it is on the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's pretty sweet given that we did go into the grass. Mm -hmm. oh, so many good things on this plane. I mean, is it everything I could want in a jet? I'm kind of a scale guy, but the thing is, this thing is good. I like it, it flies fast, it challenges me, but it's very good. Not a beginner plane. Don't get it as a beginner, you'll be disappointed. Don't be a one and done. We're here to help you avoid one and dones, okay?
So with that being said, stay tuned. Don't forget to check uh, below in the video description. You can support us in many different ways. Click the like. Please give us a like. We have long videos. YouTube does punish us. I know some of you guys say, forget what YouTube thinks. No, we care because it matters to us. The audience will be significantly smaller if we don't get good like ratio because we already have a bad retention rate because people watch what they need and then they skip to the next video and that's totally fine. We wanna be here to provide that service to you, but do us a favor and give us a like when you do that. It would really help us. And then buy from the links below. You'll be helping to support us financially, but also you're gonna have this sweet plane in your very own possession. And by the way, this 5000 6S worked great. This is 100C. You'll notice we have no puffing. It is pretty warm, just FYI. You'll wanna watch how hard you are to them. I was at 100% throttle for takeoff, and then I backed off, and I was very low on throttle. So throttle management will come into play on this plane. Just bank on that, guys. That being said, everything else is history. Check out the rest of the video, and you'll see how we did it. Come back for more. Thanks for watching. YouTube, it's Brad Phillips. We got a box. We're going to open it right now. It's going to be amazing. It'll probably be just like what you just watched. This is something new and exciting for us. Oh my goodness. What is this? It's seriously a serious. Whoa, fancy dance. Look at that. 80 millimeters of pure delight. Seems, seems a little lacking. 80 millimeters of EDF. Camera crew. There it is. Fancy, the serious specifications, these are serious. The material is lightweight yet strong EPO, ABS engineering plastics. Okay, I see that there's a nose cone that's fallen off in this image. And then we have a uh, don't cut your finger off warning. Oh, what? Good. They give us warnings too? Okay. Oh look, DB9s, that's convenient. Then we have a steerable nose gear and a serious. These, remember guys, these are serious. They're huge. They don't mess around. So what we're going to do is we're gonna just pull this thing out and if you're watching overseas, you can read this part of the box. I don't know what it says, but I think it probably says something about how awesome this plane is gonna be. And I'm excited to see it. <sighs> But of course, today it's been really windy and crazy, so hopefully that gets out of its system before we actually have to fly this thing. Ooh, it's good packing. It's hard to open the box, that's usually a good sign. That means that it's in there tight. So this plane is, maybe, maybe you've noticed, but it is an X-Fly model. It's upside down. It's an X-Fly model. You're probably wondering, what is X-Fly? X-Fly is a brand, okay? And it's a model made by that brand. Ooh. I'm learning right along with you, YouTube. We're excited to bring you these new items because we are always excited to bring new items. But it's especially exciting when it's a whole new series of items and this is a whole new series of items. So we're actually quite thrilled to be able to have the opportunity to bring these to you firsthand and show you what it's all about. And you know with Brian Phillips RC, you're gonna get the full picture of what's going on, which is really handy. We are going to be using the NX8 and either an AR631 or an AR637T. We're gonna be using not the 30C, but the 50 or 100C because this thing calls for a little bit more power and they want to have a 45C or a 35C, depending on where you look for the information. That is interesting. Look at the, look at the wheels, 2.5 inches, okay. Whoa, you might wanna make sure there's not a bunch of foam in your connector. Whoops, sorry guys, I hit the mic. Okay, so that wing feels stout, guys. Look at this. Wow. That's a wet, that's a wet decal. So that thing won't lift while we're flying. That's pretty cool. I don't think we've ever seen that on a foam plane. Nice, LEDs, those are the bright kind. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It is pointed out to the side, so let's hope we can see that good. It looks like really sturdy trunnions. 
And then we have a flap servo here, ball links, big ones. And if you're gonna have balls, you might as well have them big. Well, yeah. So then we have uh, everything tucked in here. Look at that, beautiful. It's got that Fowler shape to it, but it doesn't actually separate, so that's a little bit strange. But I can live with it for sure. It looks beautiful, very strong, very sturdy. I'm really pushing on it here and it's not bending. I don't think that opaque paint is gonna give us a very good look through the middle. Ooh, you can see one of the spars mm -hmm. there. One of the spars goes all the way out here. Jeez. Oh, and then there's the wing joiner. Let's see if we can put it like this, guys. Uh, it's just a little bit too hard to see because you got all the landing gear mechanism there. So we'll see what the rest looks like because my camera crew had to clean me off. She said I look like a bum. Any bums watching, we want your business too. You're welcome here. So look at this, guys. We have another wing. Look at that. We even get a left There's and a right two wing. two wings. It's amazing. Wow, look at that. Okay, so you might want to clean that DB9 connection out. That's interesting. So in case you guys were wondering, that is a male DB9. Cool. Okay, so we got two wings. Strangely enough, they look the same, left and right. There is a piece of Velcro that is taped into its very own pocket here. Velcro looks like oh, hook, and, hook and loop. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Hook and loop. Oh, that's good stuff. Okay. So we're going to close this up and go to the next layer of delightfulness. There's nothing over here. There's nothing over here and here. <sighs> you always got to check all the cavities to make sure there's not anything fun in there. Just saying. Ooh, look at this. I'm not taking that. I'm not taking that out yet. We're coming back to that. Okay, so we've got the horizontal stabilizers. Okay, feels very sturdy. Good hinge. It looks like a pinch hinge, but it's gotta be reinforced. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it is reinforced. Sweet. Okay, we got a servo. I can't tell what size it is. Ooh, hold on, hold on. Maybe I can see what it is without crashing it. Oh, dang it, it says like V2 looking thing on there. I'm not sure what it is. Again, wet decal. They're not decals. They're uh, water transfer. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so also I need to say this, okay? I wasn't sure I was okay with the red because it looks faded in all the artwork that I've seen on this plane, but it's actually quite a bit darker in person. Mm. It feels like it's darker red, which I like the darker red. And I think part of that is that when these boxes get printed, the first color to fade must be red. So like if you're at the hobby shop or something like that, and it looks like the box has been sitting there for 16 or 17 years. It's probably only been like 14 years. There was another plane we did the other day that's red that I didn't like on the box. And it's one yeah. of my favorite looking ones. I can't remember, I don't even know, but it's red. Okay, we have a wing joiner for the horizontal stabilizer on the tail. Carbon, carbon fiber. fiber, I think, yeah, that's carbon fiber. Sometimes they're just black and they look like they're carbon fiber, but this is carbon fiber. You can tell by the tip. You got to really look at the tip. Sometimes you got to get it right up there next to your face. Okay. They folded my manual. Oh, man. I quit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, it's not that big a deal, but it is annoying. Why do we have folded manuals? Just tape it to the back of the box. If you're listening, China, if you could just do me one favor. Tape this to the back of the box. We'll see how that looks. Yeah. Okay, so we have clip on bottom. Uh, what, what do we call those things? They're not, they're not fins. They're like, I don't know. Hopefully they'll tell We'll, we'll think of it. We'll think of it. Okay, so we have a nut sack that was very, not and bolts. Nope, just bolts. Ooh. Oh, yes. That is Man, when the nut sack is that nice. empty, it makes me happy inside. My favorite. So they stuck it right into the magnet. That was super smart because nice. nobody wants their nut sack lost on a long haul from China. Okay, they've got a hard tip on here. Very good oh, match wow, on the yeah. red. Hold still. Very good match yeah. on the red. The foam looks nice. You can tell that in the heat, that's probably going to bulge. But uh, I like the way it looks now. It looks very good. Nice, clean finish. The density of the foam is about right. It's, there is such a thing as having too dense a foam because if they're too dense, they break really easy. And if they're too soft, they don't have any strength. So you have to have so much reinforcement that it's, oh yes. Ooh, I like it. Look at the instrument cluster. Oh yeah. 
And then the pilot, pilot looks a little bit hokey. He needs to sit down a little lower, but I'm okay with it. From the side, it looks sweet. That is pretty cool. Man, that, I like his helmet and everything. That's pretty good. Yeah, there's a vent in there to keep the fog from building up on the glass. Of course, the release, high quality, strong clasp. That's good. You got some cheater holes on the side, but another cheater hole on the bottom. Oh, look at that. They have the swirl painted on the tip. That's so cool. Okay, and then let's give them a shot down the, um, the tailpipe. Woo, woo. That helps a lot. That helps with the focus <laughs> a lot. Okay, so um, we're gonna start the assembly, like there. Look at the piece count. I was, I know, oh, I'm sorry. like super excited because it's like nice and I might be able to fly. Guys, I gotta say the packaging on this was really good. Yeah. Okay, pause. We are going to talk for a minute about packaging. Okay, as you may or may not be aware, most every airplane that you buy comes from China, okay? Like it or hate it, that's the way it goes. Now, I understand that's not true. You can buy a kit from SIG or you can buy, you know, something that was made in Montezuma, Iowa, which is really cool. It's actually like 45 minutes from my house right here, Brian Phillips RC, and that's really cool. But get this, they make like 1% of the models that are being made or less, probably less than 1% of the models being made. So let's, let's just agree that if a company can package a product properly and get it to my front door from China, they can probably get it in a container to you from a local distributor. And we are gonna have some links for you so that you can buy yours. Yours will be coming from the distributor in stateside, which is really cool. And that means, now that's assuming you're ordering from America. Uh-oh, look, there's a vicious attacker. Look at this. The vicious attacker. Get out. <laughs> so the reason we pause to talk about shipping is because shipping is a huge component of successful transaction when it comes to model, model air, airplanes, okay? When you buy this thing and you want it to look good when it shows up and go like 120 miles an hour right next to your face, then, oh, that's cool, look. They stuck the connectors in there. Sorry, squirrel. <laughs> Um, if you want it to look good when you get it, then it needs to be shipped well. So I can definitely say this shipping is about, I would say that's par with some of the bigger brands that rhyme with Horizon Bobby. So I would say that's good. That's definitely a winner. Other brands have tried and failed. I'm just gonna say, now I'm not saying that we get a lot of broken planes because we really don't. We, we've had a few that are broken, but it's pretty uncommon. So this is a plug and fly. So just to remind you, we're gonna be using the NX-8, we're gonna be using one of these two receivers, and we're gonna be using one of these batteries, okay? So let's pop the hatch and take a look into the abyss. All right, pop the hatch, pull it back, oh yes. Do not chop your fingers off, camera crew. Okay, I won't. I Don't stick your hand all, all the, way the way up in into here, here okay? okay? All right, good. Dang it. Okay, so as you can see, we have very well laid cables. Look at that. There's a channel. Yeah. Man, look how clean this is. I know. Since when do we have such clean wiring? This is a plug and fly, folks. Okay, so. Sorry, I'm getting excited. I know, I can tell. I can't see anything. Excited. So I'm super impressed with how clean this is. And you want to know what else I'm impressed with? And this is something that I shouldn't be impressed with. I should expect it. I just don't because we haven't been given it very often. Okay, even by the big ones. Look what we have here. What? Right here. And I'm not talking about the quality control sticker, although oh. we could get those more often in the hobby. For and it'd be good. Receiver mounting? Something? I was just gonna say, this would be a perfect place to mount the receiver, yeah. which they probably mention in the manual that's written in perfect English. We're gonna find out. We are. I'm gonna you know read it. the whole thing. We are we are gonna we're gonna dive into that real quick because I'm curious. Look at the piece count. I even I took the canopy off and there's barely any pieces. We have one nut and bolt sack. And it's a small one. And they look like they're all one, the two, three. Same. Yeah, they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws. Wait, did I count right? You know numbers don't agree with us on this yeah, channel. We one, don't two, three, do four, math. five, six. Yeah, that's nine screws. That's crazy. I love it. It looks like a two millimeter drive. Okay. X fly. All right. All right. 80 millimeter EDF Sirius. Seriously, it's 80 millimeters. Mm. Overall length, 1300. Wingspan's 1100. That is a good size, guys. Mm -hmm. It is a very good size. 
Safety precautions. Bring lunch. <laughs> no, just kidding. That's not here. Okay, must read. Read it or die. Warning for battery charging. Hmm. But it looks all like an understandable. I know, I'm just trying to like kind of look at a few yeah. of them. But honestly, yeah, so good. far, impressive. Catalog, they have a catalog. We don't call it a catalog in North America. What do we call it? Table of contents? Yes. That's okay. I forgive him. That's pretty honest. It still makes thing. sense. It's, yeah, yeah, you can figure out what it is. Hold on. Are there, is there any, um, is there any, uh, bong, what is it like that's bushes? It's like bong something or another. <laughs> Not bongs. Um, Bosk did boskage. Yeah. Boskage. Yes. Is that what it is? It's yeah. boskage. You know, because don't fly into the boskage. You might lose your plane. That's one of those words that I didn't know existed until the Chinese told me it existed. Um, 100 amp ESC, 5 amp U back. Nice. I like that. 12 bladed fan. I, you guys already noticed that. Build and test time less than approximately 20 minutes. <laughs> They haven't seen my channel. Hey, wait, go back because it said what size the servos were. Oh, oh, it's bottom nine, of the nine first gram. cone. Thirteen gram digital metal geared servos, digital nine gram, yeah, nine gram for the uh, horizontal stabilizer and mm -hmm. elevators, mm -hmm. the assemblies there. Oh, flight time four to eight minutes. Four to eight minutes. So this is all like legit stuff. It's not yep. like they're trying to Seems about right. blow smoke. I love these simple instructions. That's good. Now, I'm not trying to beat up any other competitive brands because I can tell you this, the brand that these guys are competing with, which if you haven't figured it out yet, um, does a really good job on instructions. Mm -hmm. But I can say, I can say just one detail. Look how thin that is. I like that. Okay, so, yep, looks like it's pretty easy. Ventral fins. Ventral fins, are you kidding me? They got technical jargon right. I totally knew that. There's your center of gravity. It's like literally in the center of the plane. Center. Nice. Um, okay, so here's your receiver. All Control right, horn. looks like they suggest where you put, uh, which uh, hole you wanna stick it in, which is handy. It looks like most of it's actually pre-done for us, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Well, that's a pretty good battery diagram. They show straps, hold on, there are straps in there, right? Yeah, yeah. thick Lots straps. Lots of room for the battery too. Yeah, that's one thing that's gotten so much better, guys. Okay, so I went flying with Esteban the other day, two days ago, okay? and. You may not be aware, but when I'm not filming constantly, uh, pretty much the days I'm not filming, I fly with Esteban, and uh, that happens like about once a month. And <laughs> essentially what, what I was reminded of is I was flying some of the old jets that we have, and it is, it is amazing, if it's easy to load a battery, how much it improves the overall experience of flying an airplane because you don't have to fight the process of getting the batteries in and fight it and worry about, you know, like a nail scraping the foam or whatever sort of rash you get on there. It's amazing how much better it is when you have a well-fit battery for an airplane and you have it pre-marked. We'll show you how to do that too. Okay, cool. So uh, shows the control surfaces, dual rates uh, setting. It does talk about rates. That's nice. I'm not a big fan of actually going through this, but look how simple they set this up. This is, this is one of the most technically simple manuals I've seen in a long time. I'm quite excited. Um, hmm. Okay. Oh, look at this. They tell you how to set up your ESC. Nice. That is something that they should always do on every plane that you get out of the box. It should not be a magic mystery. They should tell you because you bought it and paid for it. I like this. Good job, guys. So far, very impressed. Oh, that's what I was looking for. See, look, they even tell you about the beeps. Beep, 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 Glad you're here to read that for us. Hold on, do we have a Vario? It's the only part of the manual you read. I just read the beeps. It's not like Tony beats on Gold Rush. So, we're gonna build this thing right now and it's gonna be so easy. I think I'm literally going to use my, I'm gonna use the plane stand that Tom bought us. Tom, thanks. High production quality YouTube channel, Brian Phillips RC. People buying us things like this that we should have bought for ourselves years before. You know, we have come a long way. We have. We used to use your blankets and mm -hmm. put holes in them. Yeah. And now we just, use things that people send us that's awesome. Yes. So thank you, Tom.
We're never gonna forget you, Tom. Okay, so that being said, uh, this assembly is going to be so freaking easy. I, we kind of started the video. Okay, so watch this, watch this guys. I'm gonna just stick it in the hole. Oh yeah, oh please line up nicely. Cause those DB9s are gonna be, they scare me. <gasps> wow. There's no reason to be scared of anything. That went so smooth. That might've been the easiest insertion I've ever had. Really? Yes. Wow. Yes, I know. Do you want me to go get your nut drivers while you? Yes, please, that one please do, please do. Since we forgot. This is, well, this, holy goodness gracious. The other one went in just as easy. This assembly is almost done. If this was a dynam, we'd still be working on the first nut sack. <sighs> so. By the way, by the way, what? Dynam did send us a hat. And a shirt. And a shirt. And we wore it for a video <laughs> about headphones, but that's okay. You guys will see because everybody that watches Brian Phillips RC is extremely loyal and they watch 100% of all of our content all the way through. <laughs> well, maybe not all the way through. They watch at least the first 5% of the video. Yes. Ten, three, maybe. 3% three yeah. of the video. <laughs> Those ventral fins were really hard to put on, guys. Hey, so far, I'm thinking about this model and I'm thinking, hmm, this is like the absolute best model for Brian Phillips RC because I like models that are easy to build. Do you want to know why? Why? Well, because we're kidding. busy. Uh oh. <laughs> and I, and we got four kids. <laughs> you guys probably don't realize this since we're filming all the time, <laughs> but uh, they're, they're down in the dungeon. Wait, hold on. We can't say that on YouTube. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't even notice. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> We're such good parents, as in you. <laughs> They're one of us. Hey, hold on a second. What? Where's my two millimeter drive? There it is. Hey, Tom, did Tom send these yeah, as well? Wow. He did. I haven't heard anything from Tom lately. He must be annoyed that we didn't mention him in like three or four of the 1400 videos we filmed. You must have not talked about him. I'm actually just phones. joking, Tom. Tom, I'm just joking. It's just a huge, hilarious joke. Best joke you've ever heard in your life. I know jokes. Can I point something out here? What? What? The screws are going in. Oh, well, except maybe not that one. Why did you jinx us? <laughs> no, Go sorry. knock on wood now. It's going in. <laughs> Actually, I might need to lubricate it a little bit. Ooh, it's gonna start squeaking and squealing. So far, so good though. Oh, it's going. Really easy. I mean, you have to have a death grip on this one. It but it didn't even squeak. Them. It didn't no. squeak like the last one. Do you remember that last one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the last one was a it was, little It was excited. fun. Okay, here we go. I don't know what we're going to do with the rest of our evening, though. It's I don't know. Like, I think we're going to have to go out and fly this plane, and it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I know. Hey, this then plane, what? being that it's only 1,100 millimeters, and it has an 80 millimeter EDF, I have a sneaky suspicion it's going to be very crazy. I'm gonna need my like extra speed filming mode. <laughs> extra speed filming mode. I need some coffee. And a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't needed a helmet yet. Brian, put your helmet back on. <laughs> you need to be safe. We don't, we don't need a repeat of last year. Oh, okay. All right, so we have everything but the tail done. All right, so let's flip this thing over. I don't know why I took the canopy off. It was so cool to look at. We could probably put it back on. Nah, oh. we're just not. We're not gonna do that. I'm a trendsetter. It's gonna be an open cockpit on my plane. <laughs> okay, so there are two leads, and since this is a... Ooh, can I... Uh, there, there. I'm just, using, I'm just using the shaft to ram it through and uh, push the wires out. Okay, so it should be pretty simple stuff. Okay, so just to be clear, the screws come in from the top. You can see because they are countersunk and also because there's like the thrust tube is under there. So, uh, so far, guys, so far, super impressed with this build. Super simple, really easy going together so far. And, you know, anytime you get an EDF jet, it can be um, 
you know, all the way through the spectrum. You can have a really easy build. You can have a terrible experience. And we've kind of had a lot of both. I would say most EDF jets that we've worked on have been reasonably easy builds. Um, unless they start with Dynam and well, I said the whole thing. <laughs> I'm actually quite excited about this. Yeah. And the funny thing is, this is going to be one of the fastest planes we've done, which is pretty cool. And it's also one of the biggest EDFs. I know, and, and you, some of you guys are watching. Some of you guys are watching thinking, oh, 80 millimeters. I eat 80 millimeters for breakfast. Okay, that must be kind of crispy. But um, we, we really enjoy the progression of EDFs that we've been kind of working through. I'm a little bit baffled on how I actually get those wires through though. Hmm, have I run into the first problem? How do I do that? I'm gonna push it through to the other side on the first one, okay? And then once it's through, okay, see, cause you got those connectors you gotta deal with somehow. Okay, so now there's two, there's two connectors. Show the people at home, I'm gonna get some screws. See how we have two now? I wonder how I'm gonna get those to fall down into the mm. cavity. Okay, so let's show the people, same exact screws. That was so easy. I am a little bit weirded out because this is going so smooth. Mm. I'm kind of like, eh, this Waiting. makes me nervous. Why is it so easy? Well, we still have to put in a, a transmitter and stuff. Well. Or, uh, not a tra receiver. we have to put a receiver in. Which are technically, they're transmitters and receivers because of the telemetry. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do hmm. on that. They did give us one extra screw, I believe. I think unless, so. Unless I miss one. Okay, can you trade me sides? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I think what I'll do is I'll turn it. Actually, you're gonna you're gonna have to be super creative. I know. Because I don't know how you're gonna film this while I'm doing this. I think I might be able to go vertical with this. Yeah. That's just a little bit awkward. That quick disconnect, kind of a sucky, sucky design for this spot. Oh, there we go. Okay, got it, got it. We're good, we're good. You see how I did that? Mm -hmm. I just pushed it and then stuffed it down. You just don't want it to undo because guys, I'm gonna tell you something. If your elevator undoes, then you're gonna crash. Because who needs an elevator anyway? A well-adjusted sail plane doesn't even need an elevator, Ian. says Ian. Doesn't need what? I wonder what ever happened to Ian. I haven't heard anything from that guy. Not like he would have, he'd been like, oh no, I need to go sail. Slope, slope sore again. He was like into it. And I love slope soaring, but that guy was just, he was super, super into it. Like Maybe hardcore. he moved somewhere where he can slope soar. Well, I, you know, no, actually him and his, uh, I think his wife was going to retire and um, they were going to take like their RV and motorcycle somehow. I wasn't, a, but it wasn't a toy hauler. So anyway, he's a super nice guy, but he just, he made one, one harmless remark and we've never let him live it down. I've made thousands of them and I also will never live them down because I've put them into infamy on YouTube. So this part, okay, so gotta be the worst part of this build. This is the MVP negative. Hmm. Trying to think of a way I can get that thing to slop down in there easily. Do you need forceps so you can at least I like I thought rip about forceps, but I kinda wanna show people how to do it without forceps. Ah, uh, there we go. Maybe I can get it now. You see the problem I'm having, guys? It's just, it's just I don't wanna force, I don't wanna force the issue and damage it, and there's not quite enough length and see when you show them from the top, you see what's going on there? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna grab the forceps. Hmm. We need forceps. Hemostats ASAP. Okay, we got bent tip and straight. Okay. Which one are we gonna need? Probably bent. bent. All right, so let's pull that thing out. Okay, so here's the issue. And once I get that controlled, I should be able to just slide it down in there. I was trying to do it without forceps because I know not everybody is going to have forceps just lying around from their surgeries. See this? I've undone that connector too. Dang it. That's, I mean, you're going to do a pre-flight test, but I just can imagine that being a bit of a difficulty in the field. Okay, so there we go. I think I might have it if I can just get, you're going to have to give me a little bit more room than that camera crew. I'm sorry. The camera crew's getting all up in my business. 
Uh, huh? There? Me? Huh? Gosh, it's just an awkward spot. See, if I... Oh, there we... Is there, oh, is that enough? Nope. Ah, see, no. Hmm. No, unfortunately not. You know what I need to do? I need to take this other one and feed it down, maybe? And just make a pocket. Okay, X-Fly, if you're watching, this would be something that you need to resolve. Because it's... Ooh, will it go up like that? Eh, I don't know. It might not be a big enough pocket. Because I'm really having a hard time getting this one in there. And I know there's probably some trick, but they didn't really show it in the manual. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember seeing it. Now, the other thing I could do... Hey, wait, 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 wait just a second. What if I took one of the leads... Tell me when I'm pulling on it. Is that it? Or is that the other one? I think that's the other one. Okay, hold on, hold on. I, there's only three wires. That's it. That's it? Pretty okay, sure. so I got a new plan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that started and then I'm gonna use the wire on this end to just very gently guide it into the correct position, okay? But I do not want it to undo, okay? Okay, so now that it's guided, camera crew, mm -hmm. watch this. Let's show the people what I'm doing. So I'm gonna use these hemostats to not hang on to it. See this? There's that. I am not gonna clip this because that would probably damage the wire. But just so you can see that wire. Now check this out. This is the trick of the day. Now, no, stay there. Oh. So now I'm gonna take and guide this into the pocket, okay? I'm gonna just start it into the pocket because it's just a little bit too bulky. Once it's started, now I can take and pull that down into the hole. Okay? Is it this one? Yep. Okay, it's this one, right? Oh, come on now, get in there. It's so dang close, I can tell it wants to go. Now I just need to force that tip down. Oh yeah, I think I got it now. Yeah. So this is the only thing I've had. Oh, there it goes. I got it. Now it's going in. Okay. So X-Fly, if you're listening, that part kind of sucked. Okay, it's in. It's all the way. So now check this out. I did not unplug the wire, and I know it for a fact, because when you unplug a wire, you can tell. So look at this, guys. See that? We're all the way flush. All the way flush. See? All the way flush. Okay? You have to get the wings all the way flush, or your bolts won't line up. And by the way, these are all machine bolts. There's no self-tapping, which is, you know, honestly, I would say that's a pretty big upgrade compared to just a screw that goes into plastic or something like that. Woo, that step kind of sucked. Yeah, it was a little much. That was the worst part of the build. I'm extremely happy with yeah. this build, yeah. if, if that was. We're not done with everything, but the rest of it's kind of up to us now. Mm -hmm. So I can definitely say that was a little bit challenging. And really, now that you've seen the way we did it, it shouldn't be challenging for you. Okay, so canopy on. Oh yes, let's bask in its glory. Look at the air inlets. That is so cool. Wow. You see there on the side, on, on the inboard the portion of the wing. That is so cool. Cool. I'm really happy with the way that looks. And is there a dihedral or is that in my head? Can you tell? Oh. I don't know. It looks like it's a pretty flat wing, which yeah. is what I would expect. Okay, great. So next step, we're gonna clean up for just a second and come right back for radio setup. All right, so the CG is gonna be 140 to 145. So they mark it as at the middle of this plastic, it looks like. So this plastic where the wing comes together, by the way, this is where I typically hold a plane and there's plastic right there, which is very good design. So I'm just gonna bring this in and then I'm actually gonna walk over just a little bit so I can make a dent in the foam like I do. And I'm gonna go halfway through the blue. So 139.5, just because if there's any in disparity, I wanna get them even, okay? And all I'm doing is I'm just following along this line and making my straight line out, okay? So I've got my, my bump there, and then I'm gonna walk this out to 145. Five millimeter range is pretty standard. I like that it's simple, they haven't complicated it by plus or minus and all this. Just tell us what they are, people. Um, okay, so, okay, so there's that mark. And I'm gonna show you up close what we're talking about here. This is pretty simple stuff, actually. 
Okay, so I wanna, I'm gonna go back down to five millimeters now just to see if I have my mark close enough that, ah, oh, geez, it's, digital calipers are a double-edged sword, folks. Yeah, we got a good five millimeter gap there. Okay, so what I do is I just basically pierce the, the foam and then I make a big ugly mark. And I know some of you guys are cringing watching me do that, but at the same time, I'm the one that's responsible for checking the CG, so I like it this way. It's very easy for me to check it. And then also, when I get into a canopy, one of the first things I do is I mark what type of battery it is. So this is a 5,000 milliamp. I think it's five to six is what they recommend. Five to six amp hour, milliamp hour, uh, 6S. Okay, I don't know where it's gonna sit yet, but I'm assuming it's gonna be here where the Velcro is. And these are high quality Velcro straps. They're not very long, which actually might be nice because sometimes they're so dang long, you don't have anything to do with all the strap, okay? These are really sturdy, strong ones, that's nice. Okay, so this is a mixing board, it looks like, but I don't know if it's active or if it's just something like a breakout board. So I guess we'll find out. They are all clearly marked. So that's super handy. So we now have the CG marked and now we should be able to go ahead and jump into the radio part. The radio setup part on this video is gonna be a conglomeration of both radio setup and plug and fly setup because we do have to actually install the receiver. Hun, have you given any thought to which one we should use? I think the seven, the 637 would probably be great, but you know, the 631 is probably okay for this. I don't know that we need the additional telemetry on it. Right. Kind of a little bit leaning toward the 631. Hmm. So this is gonna give you longer range on your telemetry, but it's also gonna give you your power levels. You know, it is an EDF jet, so it might be kind of nice to have that. It's not like we have an AV and ESC in here. Right. So we're not gonna get that feedback. Hmm. If you do the... 637 and you put the little cable in you do have to put it into the ic5 um yeah right. that's yeah i mean you you can do that anywhere you want so yeah okay. we could do that on there it would be pretty easy and it, it you know where this wire goes back it should be no problem i don't think we're gonna have any issues there okay and an ic5 of course is going to be compatible with an ec5 that is an ec5 by the way on there this battery the 50C, for instance, that comes with an IC5 has a smart lead in there. So the smart lead's not gonna do anything for us, but they will mesh, they will work. So that is gonna be no problem. I think maybe on this one, we'll go ahead and do the 637T. And the only reason I even have any apprehension is because this is a pretty simple, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six servos, but we're only gonna have we could set up crow. I'm not sure if we need crow on this plane. What do you think? It has flaps. It does have flaps. I don't know if we need the, the crow, you know, but we have enough channels we can do it. Forward programming makes us super easy, guys. But the hardest choice is just which one do I want to use? I'd like to show it on the 631 to make it less expensive for people if they're, you know, following all of our links. But the reality is, I think the 637 is probably better because we're going to have full range telemetry. This is a pretty fast plane that can get away from you in a hurry. So I think we're gonna go, after all that deliberation, we're gonna go with the 637T. And of course, if you have like a crashed bind and fly or whatever from Horizon, you can, you can pull that out and use the uh, bind and fly. You just have to revert it back to the defaults, upgrade the firmware, and then roll it back to the uh, standard, and then you can start from scratch. So I think we'll do it that way. And we're gonna size this out in terms of like CG testing and everything. This is Gen 1. Uh, smart pack, which is going to be a 5,000 milliamp hour or five amp hour 6S 50C. Okay. So that's going to satisfy the 45C requirement as per the manual. The website. Website. That was 35 to 45C, I believe is what they called for. Isn't that what they said? Because you told me two things this morning when we were talking about it. There was two different things on two different websites. The XY website said 35C minimum. Okay. So looking at this connector, this is a micro P, uh, well, it's actually a J, I don't know if that's micro JST or PH, but either way, it doesn't matter. This actually plugs into the telemetry input here, like this. 
And what works nice about that is that that's going to be chased back along the length of this wire. Mm -hmm. So what I've done in the past is I take that thing and I just twist it like this, okay? And if you wanna make it super fast, then you take your drill and you chuck this into the chuck and you just spin it. And what that does is it basically just makes this nice braid, which keeps the wires really clean and super duper easy, just like this. And if you don't have your drill and you don't wanna go get it because I'm too lazy and you're, you know, it's like all the way downstairs, then you can just do it like this. You can see it doesn't take too terribly long because I'm already like three quarters of the way down the length. Okay, and that's what we're gonna do, and that's gonna give us a nice clean finish when we're all said and done. And then you can chase down the length of the positive or the negative lead, whichever meets your fancy, or you can just chase it down the pair and then tie them all together in a trifecta. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do. Now these long format videos take a lot longer than our peers, which typically they don't include all of this stuff, or maybe they have a separate video. Uh, not to beat them up for doing things a little bit different than we do. Everybody has their own shtick. And so in our case, we wanna show you start to finish, unbox all the way to radio setup so that you can follow along and do this yourself on your own plane. That's one of our goals here is to help you guys not be one and done, which means buying one plane and then ending up with one crash plane and quitting. Because if you quit in this hobby, it's a lot of money down the tubes, first of all. And then second of all, we really want you with us. We want more people flying. We want more legislative power in this hobby. So we want you here with us. And so we are glad to have you and we're hoping that you'll be with us for a long time. But in the meantime, we wanna teach you as much as we can and get you up to speed as quick as we can so that you can be up and flying all these sweet jets and things like this obviously is not a first plane, but this is equipped, this receiver is equipped with safe and AS3X. AS3X is artificial three axis stabilization or artificial uh, stabilization, uh, three axis. I always say it in the wrong order, but it's three axis stabilizer. So that means when the wind blows the wing down, it corrects despite you not correcting. It's very good and it knows how to differentiate. Same thing with when the nose gets blown up or when the plane gets yawed like this, okay? Cause there's yaw, pitch and roll. That's the three primary control axis and it's going to help to offset the effects of the environment around you. It's also going to allow you to set up, now you don't have to use that, you can use that. Also safe, sensor-aided flight envelope, which is going to allow you to let go of the sticks and the plane will correct to level. That's pretty sweet. It's a huge factor. And if you're a new pilot, you're probably thinking, whatever, it's not that hard. <laughs> Try it and then get back to me. Um, but that is the number one reason why people have trouble learning to fly is because when they let go of the sticks, they assume the plane is just gonna like level out and go level. Well, that's not the way it works in real life. You let go and it goes like this. So safe will help you avoid that. Sensor aided flight envelope. That is on top of AS3X. AS3X is at the heart of safe. There's also a limited bank angle. So when you pull up, it won't flip over and it won't go over upside down and it won't go over upside down and it won't go over upside down. That's limited bank angles. So. You get all that, and then if you wanna program in a panic button, you can also do that. I wouldn't recommend it, I never have. I don't think it's a good idea. I think the best thing is to have a safe, an AS3X, and then maybe in some applications have you know, nothing, like in the middle. Um, I don't usually fly my planes out of AS3X, and I usually don't fly my planes in safe, but I like to show you how to set it up. So that's what we're gonna to do today as part of this build series, and it's definitely something that we try to do all the time. So we've got two wires here, and we've got these two wires here. So the correct way to wire this up would be to solder it on there. But I see five connectors, I see three connectors are notoriously difficult to do that on. So I'm gonna show you a shortcut that's gonna allow you to do that. Do we have any pins out here by chance? Like a push pin? Like a push pin, do we have a push pin? I can get you a push pin. Well, I was just gonna say the other option is we could use, I have this. Now you could imagine this was a push pin, but it's actually not, it's just a very fine tip. Uh, hex drive, okay? So I'm just gonna take this wire and I'm gonna pierce the wire at some point. And you're like, Brian, don't pierce your wire. And then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna get some good penetration right here through the sheath. And you're like, is that really what you're gonna do? Brian, that seems a little half, you know what? Half-hearted. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, camera crew. That was a good, good save. Jeez, I almost Tony Beats it up here. 
The RC sailors would be so ashamed of that. They'd be like, we would never do that. So you see this? Look at that. Wow, that's amazing. It is amazing. We've got good penetration and we will be able to measure the voltage successfully there. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Brian, that is so chintzy. And you would be correct, but I'm gonna show you how to make it maybe not quite as chintzy as I've shown, because what we need to do is we need to basically go ahead and strip back just a little extra wire. Now that's probably going to be enough and it will give you more than enough. Remember, ooh, sorry, bumped the camera crew's arm. Remember, all you're doing is taking telemetry data from this. It's not like you're running another engine on this, okay? It's very low current, that's why you can use a small lead. Well, it's actually exactly as much current as going through it. And this is measuring all that good stuff, okay? So in our case, we're basically looking for the voltage of the pack, okay? So all you have to do is secure this so that it can't come out and then you're golden, okay? So there's two ways to get a little bit better, a little bit less chintzy. If you strip this back, you'll get a little bit deeper penetration, but you have to remember that this, this end is tinned, so it's going to be uh, basically hard. And then back here, it's not tinned, so it's gonna be less hard, okay? My strippers are not cooperating with me well, of course. There we go, got a good strip that time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist this wire just to make it so that it's stiffer, okay? I just wanna be able to get good penetration. Okay, so you see I'm just getting that braid. I'm just getting that twist pattern in the wire. Okay, so that makes it quite simple and you can just insert this all the way in and get super good penetration. You're not even trying to get into the weave of the cable inside of there. You're just basically trying to get it in there, period. It can go inside on the inside of that sheath like this and just right along the cable. You're gonna get tons of contact area, remember, this isn't like going to be sitting on, you know, like a uh, deadliest catch uh, boat, you know, with salt water splashing on it for six months of the year. It's gonna be flown and then put up and it's gonna be basically babied all the time of its life, okay? Now the alternative measure is to basically pull back this lead and then essentially rebuild the connector, okay? That'd be the correct fully uh, kosher way. You see what I did that time? I opened that up a little bit. And when doing so, you may find that occasionally you actually damage your silicone, okay? And nobody wants damaged silicone, right? Right. Okay. So you see how I open that up and I've got a little slit now? That slit gives me more room for penetration, but it's not necessarily ideal in this. You see how it's just folding over on me? So now would be a good time if you were going to, you could actually tin these and then they would be hard. So, but again, we don't need to do that. I'm just showing you options so that you can copy my uh, easy way of doing it. And then you can do it whatever way you want. Now you don't even need it to be down here by the connector. To be honest, you could go way back here if you wanted and it would work just fine, okay? So that's one way. Now there's another trick that we have used that works really nice. And that is if you have a toothpick, a toothpick, I know these are all common like kitchen things. You're like, Brian, why do you always use kitchen stuff? Well, because we're in a kitchen, like that's what was lying around. If I was in a garage, I would grab garage things, but I figure not everybody has a big intense garage, but everybody has a kitchen. Um, okay, so look at that. So now we've opened up the pocket a little bit with the tip. Okay, now that we've opened up the pocket, watch how nice this works. I'm showing you success and failure. Um, not intentionally, if it would have worked the first time, I would have just left it. <laughs> the truth slips. Actually, no, we, we had it. We had it good enough at the beginning. Oh. So the other thing you can do is you can also come in from the other side, but I don't like doing that. I don't like that method. It's a lot harder to get it to work. The camera crew is having trouble reaching. And she's like feverishly trying to get a good angle and about to whack me in the eyeball <laughs> with the cable. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing and you're like, Brian, this is a lot of work for telemetry. Yeah, that is kind of a lot of work for telemetry, I agree. But you gotta remember, the one bit of information you do want on an EDF, you see how nice that works? And I'm just gonna stuff that in until it gives me trouble and then I'm gonna stop, okay? That's not gonna come out and I'm gonna show you how to keep it from coming out, okay? The next step is what we're gonna do, okay? So I'm just finding the hole we poked with our little 0.9 millimeter driver thing. Okay, so I'm just going in here, giving it a good twist. Oh, she split on me, ouch. So you see this? Oh, look at that. Now we're inside. Okay, look at that, very simple. That is going to be plenty good, but I'm going to reinforce it very simply with one method. 
And you can, you can slide them this way, you can slide them that way, it doesn't really matter. The point is once you do this, then you're golden. It's gonna basically hold until the plane is crashed in a million pieces or you've decided to upgrade and go to something better. Now we're gonna relieve the stress that could possibly be applied to this connection by wrapping the tape and then covering our couple little, really small little pinhole sized holes that are gonna be inconsequential. And I'm teaching you this because I want you guys to know that this is easy to do and you don't have to take and cut the end off and re-solder, but you can do that too if you want to. And that is the proper way to do it. And I suggest that if you really want a perfectly finished model, that's what you should do, okay? But in my case, this is gonna be every bit as good. I'm gonna enjoy the plane just as much and I'm gonna get in the air a little bit quicker and it's not gonna compromise the performance of the plane. What's the worst case that scenario if this doesn't work? You don't have pack voltage. I don't have pack voltage. Does the plane crash? No. Okay, good. If this was critical to the system performance, like I was gonna crash my plane over that, then I would never, ever, ever recommend this, okay? So you see how that, that goes back like this? Okay, now I can just tie that along and we can just run a couple of zip ties or even simpler, if you have electrical tape, you can take some electrical tape and you can run back and just tape it onto your lead and make it as simple and effective as possible. And remember, we're going for the application here, okay? We're just trying to meet our necessary requirements, okay? See how nice and simple that is? We're gonna run this all the way back and then this wire is gonna suck back all the way in there and I might actually use my forceps. Did I put the forceps away? Yeah. Why do we put the forceps away? I don't know. We weren't done with cables. <sighs> okay, so we have forceps again. So I'm gonna use the forceps to feed that wire back. But the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna plug in that lead, okay? Because then I know where I'm aiming for. Now these antenna are diversity antennas because there's a left and a right one or whatever you wanna call that. This one's gonna go this way, this one's gonna go that way. And it doesn't matter what direction they're at as long as they're perpendicular, no. Yes, 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 okay, yes. The point is, as long as they are not perpendicular, they're parallel, if they're parallel, that's bad, okay? Make them 90 degrees offset, okay? That's all you need to worry about, it's very simple. Also, I noticed that this tray does move a little bit, so that makes me a little bit concerned about having a stabilized receiver that could move spatially within the environment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to either brace this with something, or I'm gonna glue it in a little bit, okay? So I'm just gonna look at the possibility of a couple of different measures that will hold that tight. I think the easiest is just gonna be some simple hot glue. It's gonna take care of the problem. The other option is if you don't have hot glue, let's say you buy this thing and you bring it to the flight field and you're like, what can I do to get this thing in the air? I'm curious if this tape is enough, but uh, I think the tape would probably hold that thing in. But all you have to do is get it to one side, okay? Yeah, I think hot glue is gonna be a lot better. Yeah. I don't know if that thing comes out, it'd be sweet if it did, because then you could mount the stuff so it comes in and out. Um, I want my antenna to go back, I think, because then that gets out of the way of the battery area, mm -hmm. and that's gonna protect things. But then I actually don't mind having the antenna wire coming over here, okay? So I think I'm gonna do that. So we're gonna get an X-Acto knife. I'll show you a little trick for chasing your antenna lines. And I know I just said here a second ago that I was going to, thank you, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my next step is let's just kind of generally lay that where that's gonna be going. I was talking about this earlier, and so I'm gonna do that now. Remember it's keyed, so it only goes one direction. Okay. And normally the pins would be going that direction. Ah, I wonder if that'd be smarter. I don't know, it's gonna make it a lot harder to plug in. Mm -hmm. But then it's gonna get the wires. Yeah, I don't think we got enough length if we do that. So we'll just go this way. This is your time to make things pretty, guys. This is when you make it look nice. If you do this wrong here, it's gonna look terrible forever and everybody will die. Wait, that's Minus not what happens. Minus the last part. You know, you watch these TV shows, these reality TV shows, and they're always so like, if they don't get the paint matched, then everybody will die. <laughs> it's like, no, they won't. They'll just like go get the paint matched again. Okay, so that's where I want that to be, okay? 
I'm satisfied with that location. So now that I know that, I think the next logical maneuver would be to go ahead and just get it glued in. So we are gonna pause, we'll get the hot glue cooked up and we'll be back. Okay, while the camera crew was grabbing uh, the hot glue gun, I taped one more piece of tape, nothing fancy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the forceps and just kind of guide this excess wire. Uh, obviously you could just cut and strip out the extra wire, but I kind of like to have that there because it gives future flexibility in the event you decide to rearrange things or move the receiver or whatever. You see, all I'm doing is just guiding this wire back, folks. This is pretty simple stuff, what we're doing right now. This whole receiver setup, if you were doing it off camera and not trying to teach other people different methods that might work well for them, you could probably do the installation in maybe a half an hour total. So it's definitely not 20 minutes, but the thing is like, we're actually doing things right in air quotes, okay? So you see how nice and clean that is. It goes up to the top, it's out of the way. And oh, I just realized I rotated the receiver. Whoops, there we go, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so we're gonna basically put that right there. All right, perfect. Now there's a million different ways you can mount receivers. One of the ways that I have seen a lot of guys do it is they will use 3M double-sided tape and there's nothing wrong with that. I've seen guys use Velcro. This does come with Velcro, so it might be kind of nice to Velcro that thing down. And honestly, Velcro is plenty good to hold the thing down. And then if it doesn't feel appropriate when we're done, then I can tack it with a little bit of hot glue. The hot glue is gonna hold the tray in and then this is gonna hold the receiver down. So I'm just gonna use that because it came with the plane. There is not anything wrong with this. If people tell you there's something wrong with this, there's something wrong with them. <laughs> do people tell you that? They do. They're like, I can't believe, I can't believe you would use a, just a double-sided tape. I can't believe you would use Velcro, Brian. What do they want you to use? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's whatever holds it in the hole. Okay, so the only thing I don't like about that is I probably should use two if I'm gonna go that route because then it's nice and Velcro-y. No, it's gonna be too wide then. We're going this way. That is some really sticky Velcro. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Hook and loop. Huh? Hook and loop. Oh, sorry, Velcro, it's branded. Velcro, just send us an email <laughs> to philipsfarmsolutions at gmail.com. We can work together. Okay, so now this lead, I think I'm gonna actually plop that through the other way and then just drop. Okay, so now we just wanna make sure our antenna are gonna come out in such a manner that's going to be acceptable. It's not like one has to come out one side and one has to go out the other. Oh man, that stuff is super sticky, I like that. That's good. So far quite impressed with this plane. Wasn't sure what to expect. I mean, of course, whenever you work with people that want you to review planes, they're gonna talk them up and just tell you how great they are and they're like the best plane that you've ever seen. And there's not even a possibility that it could suck huge, big time. And um, you know, they, they obviously want you to think it's great because they want you to you know, help bring these planes to market. And you know, like we've seen planes that suck big, huge time. And uh, like so far, I'm actually really impressed with this model. So I'm really happy with it. Very happy to be associated with planes that are good and uh, maybe not planes that are a huge pain to put together. But uh, so far, really impressed. Is it perfect? Well, I mean, we haven't had a lot of complaints yet, so I'm not gonna go out on a limb just quite yet. And also I'm trying to be careful about those leads because this battery lead is gonna have to get moved every time we plug in our, okay, so you see how it's moving? That is the play on that board. So that's what we were talking about, okay? Mm -hmm. So I don't wanna do any of the other antenna stuff until we get some hot glue. And you're like, Brian, why are you using hot glue? Why are you using hot glue? Why don't you use CA or you know epoxy? And that, boy, if I had a dollar for every time somebody asked me why I didn't use epoxy, the reason I'm not using epoxy is because I don't have time I to use epoxy for this. Yeah. If you guys have time for epoxy on this, go for it. There's nothing wrong with that, except that epoxy is heavy and it takes at least five minutes to set up. Um, this is hot glue. Minutes. We don't have five minutes. We don't have five minutes. We got planes to review. Okay, see how I did that? I put a strip of hot glue on there, okay? And I did it real wide. Why did you do so wide, Brian? So I could do that, okay? Now remember, this is like a coffee cup. It's gonna expand, it's gonna be 
It's gonna be kind of a pain for a minute because it's going to cool real slow unless you blow it. If you blow it, then, you know, everybody's happy. Works better. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm gonna let that set up for just a second and I'm gonna do the other side. What I need is I need that long sticky outy tip that, hey, this thing came with it. Okay, this was high quality. This was like a Walmart brand mm -hmm. hot glue gun, okay? Because somebody stole my other hot glue gun. Are you implying so that I stole a tool from my wonderful wife and camera crew? I would never do that unless it was convenient. You just used my toothpick. Those toothpicks are expressly for RC. If you go up there and you look on it, it says for IRS reasons, these toothpicks are only to be used for airplanes. Okay, do you see this? So now I have glue on both sides. You can see that it's not moving. It's already stopped. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so now to reinforce the corners, this is what I do generally and typically when I am doing a mount in this technique. I'm just need to, I need to get that stupid wire to go back there and it's not being nice. It's being mean. Stop being mean to me. Stop it. Okay, I don't know which side I want it to come out yet. Once this is all settled, it's not gonna be a problem, but for now it's kind of annoying. Okay, so the hot glue is back there. Let's get the antennas worked out because then they'll be settled. Okay, I'm gonna stick them down into the hot glue. If it's still hot, it's not hot, so we can't do that. So I'm gonna stick them in this groove. Let's look at the end. Let's look at the, oh yeah, we don't have much height there, so we don't have to worry about getting in the way of that. Ooh, we've turned the light on. We're getting serious now. Well, they can't see your hands. You know what I'm gonna do? Dark. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna use some tape now because we're getting serious. We've upgraded from hot glue to scotch No, this is, this is for the antennas. I was thinking about putting them in a, a pocket, which I can show you that method on the other direction maybe. Mm -hmm. But this one's gonna be the super high-tech method. This is the high-tech method. You t oh, the tape stuck to my finger. Ooh, so annoying. I'm almost as annoyed as when they folded my manual. Oh yeah. Oh, wowzers. And you guys are like, Brian, you seem like you're being kind of reckless. I'm calling the AMA. Oh, sorry, did I say it out loud? Look at that. Look how that will work perfectly, okay? So now the next step is I need to get the other antenna. You see the other antenna popped out and it's going back. I wanna make that antenna vertical, but I don't wanna get it up here where the battery is gonna be preferably. I'd like to have it up higher if possible. So one trick that sometimes works, oh, by the way, you see this tray? It's not moving now. Mm -hmm. It's plenty sturdy. If it breaks free, that's because you crashed. Okay, so I'm gonna stuff that down. And then I wanna bring that vertical right here, okay? And I'm like, yeah, I don't wanna depend Ooh. on a piece of tape. Yeah, I like that. I like it. I like Ooh, it a lot. If you taped it, you wouldn't have to let go. Knife. Seriously, I'm gonna knife you. You see this? I'm going in an angle. Like this. Everybody always loves it when I do the freak voices. I'm not sure why. It's not my favorite. They don't actually. It's just, I just enjoy it. <laughs> it's just me. Okay, so I'm gonna take one of these, oh, the 0.9 millimeter. Thanks, Tom. Brian, that's not the correct use for that tool. I'm gonna have to repossess it. I hope Tom likes this. I hope so. That's all right. He's not going to stop sending us tools. I haven't gotten a tool from Tom for a long time. I wonder if he just switched over to the dark side and he just exclusively watches the RC Sailors now. That's not the dark side, Brian. What are you talking about? Jeez, they're just a wholesome, wonderful, little nice couple that has three times as much audience as me and it drives me crazy. Not, not quite three times, folks. Let's be fair. I thought you were gonna say not actually crazy. <laughs> no, um, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just pressing down and you see I'm doing this very gently because I don't wanna break this. This is where you could seriously ruin your, your plane. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk antenna for a second. Antennas are a uh, coax or, yeah, it's a coaxial media. So they have a sheath on the outside and then there is a 
there's an antenna that goes through, and then there's another thing that goes on the outside, and it's a shield, okay? And that helps to pick up noise that would otherwise be picked up through the receiver inside, okay? So then at the end, there's a, a, a thing that like bites on and a pin that goes through the center, okay? So it's actually two conductors. There's an outside conductor that grounds, and there's an inside conductor that carries the variable uh, information that's being picked up. And that is like 28 millimeters of exposure, okay? It's got something to do with the wavelength of the actual uh, RF that's being carried, the radio frequency. The camera crew was giving me a look like you're that insane. Not the look I so anyway, yeah, she was giving me the look like, hey, wrap it up, Brian. You lost your audience. So here's the thing. If you can keep that uh, protected portion, you never want to kink it where that sheath ends, that gray part, okay? That gray part right there. You see where my thumb is? You want to be super careful at that point. Because if you break it there, your antenna is not going to work. It's going to work very poorly at best. Okay, so now I'm going to use this soft thing. And that's why I'm being super careful at this spot. Because when I cut that, I want it to dive down into my slice. The slice, it's my favorite part, says the crazy weirdo. Okay. Mm, now I'm gonna stick the tape over it. And why are we taping it, camera crew? Just for extra protection. For protection if from the elements. Everybody wants extra protection. That's true, well, not everybody. Well. Not everybody. All right, so now I need to get this, this pesky wire is driving me nuts. It's like those pesky elevators. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna slide it back in the hole if I can get it to go. Ah. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, Ooh, we found it. Stay, stay, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, I got it all the way back there but it wants to keep coming out and it's really annoying. Can you tape it? I don't think so, probably. So anyway, this isn't gonna get pulled out so it's not gonna yank that cable. But the right. whole idea of trying to get that out of the way is because I don't want to fight it every time I do anything with this plane. Okay, so I'm going to take the excess and drop it down, drop it like it's hot right here. And I'm just going to very carefully, so there's no pressure on the connection, I'm going to drop it like it's hot, just there, okay? Just like that. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm just going to take this hot glue and I'm just going to go like, Bleh! Oh my goodness. Yeah, I know, seriously. Excessive. No, it wasn't because now I'm going to also bridge this right there. It's super simple, super simple technique we're doing here. Okay. I just need to ensure that that stays low so that as this gets manipulated all the time, and then I'm going to take a little extra and I'm going to slob it on the side there. I'm going to slob it over the top. Okay. I'm going to lick the finger and touch it and then we're done. And then we don't ever have to look at it again. It doesn't have to be pretty unless you're putting it on online. See this? Oh, good. Where see that? It? Yep. Oh, yeah. I guess we're putting this no on. No one will see it. So, now, watch this. I'm just going to take a glob and just drop it there. And then I'm going to hold this out of the way and I'm going to take a glob. And I'm going to drop it there. And you're like, but Brian, that's a lot of weight. I know. This is an EDF. We're probably going to have a little bit of weight that goes back here. Okay, see how we did that? It's nothing fancy. All we're trying to do is brace it so it doesn't move like crazy, okay? And I'm just showing you how you can do this easy method and it works for all four corners, okay? Okay, just like that. And then you don't have to like overthink it, okay? And I'm gonna level this so it doesn't run down there too bad. And then the Q-tip, the wonderful Q-tip. Just gonna kind of pull that up the side. And I'm just gonna kind of pull that up the side. And then I'm just, you see how I'm rolling it? It just kind of puts it onto there. Okay, real simple. It's like happy, happy trees. I'm just gonna put a happy tree right here. Okay, now this button, that's a clicker button for binding, okay? That's the technical terminology, the clicker button for binding. I wanna do a little bit more glue on top of that wire. And by the way, there is one thing really nice about hot glue, and that is if you don't like the way it looks, it will come off of this foam. Generally speaking, it may not come off perfectly, but if you do it right, if you glob it on there big enough, you can usually grab the whole chunk and rip the whole chunk off. 
Okay, so there was evidently an emergency, a medical emergency. I had some glue on or near my eyeball and the camera crew caught it. Thank God you did. I know how you are when you get stuff in your eye. I could have been blinded. I've lived with you for a while. You guys may not know this, but I used to be blind for most of my life. If you're new to this channel, I had LASIK. Um, no, it was not an affiliate thing. That would have been awesome. <laughs> that would have been awesome. But um, I had LASIK and uh, it, was, it was a very good call. I was told for 10 years I was a bad candidate, which was lies or exaggerations, probably just mostly exaggerations. I was a perfectly fine candidate. It worked perfect for me. I even went back for a touch up and had a complication. So you go in there and so it's like this. It's like, oh, just let me just take this and just rah, rah, right there. And, and what they do is they, oh, there it was. They just uh, lift this fold that they cut with a laser. And then he's like, let me just scrape that a little bit. And he folds it back down because I had some skin cells that grew back in the uh, line of vision right in front of the iris. So that was cool. But that was the complication on the touch-up. By the way, the touch-up was like five seconds of lasers burning my retina or whatever it is. It's actually the lens. It's not the retina. The retina's in the back. So anyway, they burned it and reshaped it. And that was like five seconds. When I went the first time, it was like 37 minutes. No, it wasn't quite that long. It was like a minute. But I mean, you smell yourself burning and you're like, mmm, that's me, delicious. And you're like sitting there and they've got your hand and they're like, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Don't look away. We're burning your eyeballs right now. Just hold still. Don't worry. It doesn't hurt as bad as you think. And it actually doesn't hurt while, you, while they're doing it because they have all the numbing drops in there. Okay, hey, now that the glue's dry, cooled, let's go. Look at this. Wow, there's... Oh my goodness, it looks so beautiful. Wow. I'm glad that's, I'm not blind. This is amazing. Well, anyway, I was blind for most of my life and now I'm not, and that's the moral of the story is, if your eye doctor is telling you're a bad candidate, you might wanna to talk to the people that actually do it. Ha, ah, interesting thing. One of the guys that worked there at the place that does the things to your eyes, LASIK Plus in this case, he suggested that I was a bad candidate too. And I said, hmm, out of curiosity, uh, where are your glasses, sir? Oh, I don't need glasses. And I was like, you're an optometrist and you don't need glasses? Get out of here. <laughs> so I immediately wrote off what he had to say and then waited for the surgeon to call me. And she called me and she says, she says oh, well, Brian, uh, it looks like we're going to have to do, um, you know, they suggested a, a corneal implant, which is like double the cost. And uh, the corneal implant doctor, that is beautiful, would have had to uh, do this said surgery in a different town and it would have been complicated and more expensive. No, actually that was the second doctor. The first doctor was at this other location in another state. And he said, Brian, I've done like 56,000 of these surgeries. I would do yours with just LASIK plus. I would not do the corneal implant, which by the way, if you get a corneal implant, you have a natural cornea and you have an artificial cornea and they rub and you have a 100% chance of cataracts. Mm. So anyway, all right, we're ready to put the battery in after we plug this. So I think we're going to go ahead and we'll continue the story as we go because I know a good story. I know a good story when I see it. All right, so we have the two straps I'm done. All right. And we're going to just hold this stuff out of the way. <gasps> Get out of there. I'm going to put the remaining portion of Velcro. Which side usually goes down? Let's look at the batteries that Ooh. do have Velcro. Good. I'm not a big fan of Velcro on batteries. Gosh. You guys have heard that before. Um, I've got some on this 3200, so let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so we want this one on there. You want the hooks down, or hooks yeah. on the... This is the pokey part, like the harder part. This is the soft part. Also known as the hooks. Okay, whatever. Oh my, teacher. I'll take your word for it. Okay. For those of you that don't know, my camera crew was a home ec teacher for 10 years. Family Consumer Science. Whatever. I know there's no, like half, half of the audience doesn't know what that is. Oh, by the way, while we have the hot glue gun not quite totally uh, cooled, I am going to just plop a little row of hot glue here on, on these connectors, okay? What's that gonna do? It's a get out of jail free card. That was a little toasty. Mm, yummy. Nothing like eating a little hot glue for dinner. <sighs> okay, so now we're at this weird spot in the middle of the video where I kind of need to like hook up the radio 
uh, but I need to sort of also plug these in simultaneously. So we have to make a decision. So in this case, we're gonna make a decision to get the radio set up and we will continue with the LASIK story later. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the radio setup part, the pre-radio setup, and then we'll have to actually land wires based on where our cables are supposed to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on and I think technically, okay, so we're on a plane. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to system setup and I'm gonna disconnect RF and then I'm gonna go to model select. I have to block the screen for this because we have some new releases and that we can't show yet. And I'm trying to think, could we show, because we've already released the ultra stick. That's the way we could set this up. I don't know if we're gonna need Crow though. I really don't know. Can you just do it from scratch, can't we? Um, well, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so system setup, disconnect RF, model select. We're just gonna go to an add new model. Okay, so add new model, create an acro. I have to cover that screen in case we have new releases. Okay, so there's an acro, create. Takes a second sometimes. Okay, and then you can type in a model name here. So this is a 48th model, colon, space, and yes, you can change these characters. I have a legacy keyboard here, even though I am upgraded on firmware. Okay, so you click, you highlight that, and then you basically type in the information. So this is like the XFly Sirius 80. That's what I'll put. So scroll to X, click, and then scroll to the next character, and so on and so forth, and we'll come back when that's typed in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I opted to put XFly Sir uh, Sirius 80 millimeter, because it's an EDF, okay? I always try to put some size identifier in case I have two of the same model. One's big, one's small, something like that. Okay, it always beeps like that. Then aircraft type, this is where you set up what type of wing it has. So in this case, we're gonna set it up as one aileron, one flap. Now we have enough channels that you can actually set it up as two ailerons and one flap, and that puts Crow right in the menu. But I don't know if we're gonna need Crow on this plane. It's probably gonna be like super overkill, but it would be pretty sweet. Honestly, one thing if I could add to these transmitters is I would love to have a four position switch for weird instances where you want, um, you know, like flaps, like takeoff flaps, landing flaps, and then crow as well that would act as like a reflex or a braking. So I'm just gonna set it up standard, one aileron, one flap, and then of course the tail is standard here. We'll click next, we'll go to the image, and I'm gonna go to some sort of jet and see if there's a jet. Is there a jet? Actually, like the second or third one. Oh, huh, that one's pretty close. Pretty I close. mean, the Habot, that's really close. Yeah. So that's good enough for what we're doing. Okay, so we're going to walk back, and then we can go to F mode setup. Now, we do have to have an F mode setup, a flight mode, and I'll show you why. So there's three that you can have set up. Um, might as well set this one. And I'm trying to think. Um, we're going to have retracts. We're going to have flaps. And then we're gonna have somewhere else, I typically divert to here for safe or AS3X. So I'll just set it to, uh, yes, we want it on, but I wanna set it to switch D, okay? And then it says three, you can actually set that to less, but it just depends on what type of switch you assign it to. If you assign it to here, that saturation's pretty bad. Can we correct that at all? Um, yeah, there it is, okay. So you see how it says inhibit there? That's, I want you guys to be able to see. We choose the orange and black because it's the easiest for us to film in and outdoors and so we don't have to change it. If we go to a white screen, you can't see it. Mm -hmm. It just saturates too bad. Okay, so the D switch, that's D switch. I use D switch for my flight modes. And then it looks like there's three different names. You can name them here and all sorts of different stuff. Okay, so I'm not gonna mess with that yet. And then channel assign, I think auxiliary two is attached to B. We might be okay with that for now. There's probably another assignment here, but we'll come back after we have everything set. Okay, so walking back out, it's got a five minute flight time. Do you remember what the flight time? Uh, four to eight. Okay, let's do throttle cut first, sorry. Switch H. Okay, so when I move the stick, it doesn't move. That means throttle cut's on and I want throttle cut to be in this position. That's good. So we're good there. And actually from this screen, you can also turn it off and see if it works, which it is moving. And then when I turn it on, it cuts the throttle. So that's an important safety feature. On an EDF, it's maybe a little bit less critical, but I would still recommend it. It's a good habit to have. Okay, flap system, switch B. Okay, so I'm just gonna set uh, position one to like minus 100 and position 
2, or excuse me, position 0, which is all the way back to minus 100, position 1 to nothing, and then position 2 to 100. Now, I don't know what position it needs to be in for flight because I'm not sure how they configured the servo, so I'm always running it in the middle when I first turn it on. Now, you'll notice that flaps are moving and auxiliary 2 is moving because auxiliary 2 is tied to switch B by default. And then the flaps also are triggered here because I set it that way, okay? So we're gonna have to change that at some point. Now, I'm gonna set the speed to two seconds. That's the deployment speed for all three switch positions the way it should have been from default. You can see that, but then auxiliary two is still fast acting here because that's associated to the position of the switch. We're gonna probably deassociate auxiliary two from B and put it on something else later. Cause like right now, nothing's changing when I change the flight mode, okay? So in fact, let's go ahead and just do that now. Let's go down to system setup, disconnect RF and scroll down to channel assign. Looks like auxiliary three is on the right knob. That's where I want it to be. That's gonna be our gains, okay? So auxiliary two is assigned to B. I'm gonna switch it to D. I can walk back out. Okay, so let's click in here and set up timer now. Timer is gonna be set to um, probably four to be safe for now and one out is active. That means when over 25% on this stick, it's gonna start counting down from four. Then the different conditions that are gonna be met as we go, you can have a tone at one, I'm gonna leave that off. I'm gonna leave that off. I just wanna count down with voice from zero, or uh, from 10 to zero. And then I want expiration to be tone and vibrate, and then every minute we'll get a tone. And then there's a little bit more you can do. I don't wanna worry about that. And then further audio events can be set up and associated, but we're gonna associate those later. Um, not the least of which is um, flight mode one, flight mode two, or excuse me, flight mode one, two, and three. So it's probably gonna be like safe. Flight mode two, flight mode three. See that? So it'll be like AS3X, nothing, and then safe. But you know, that's really a personal preference, so I'm gonna leave it that way. So let's go ahead and set up some basic uh, expo as well. And again, you don't have to do all this stuff at the beginning, but I'm doing it this way just so I can show you guys what I normally do and then I'll give explanations as I go. By the way, this is a really helpful manual. It comes with the receiver. If you haven't walked through the forward programming, which we'll be doing shortly, it actually helps a lot. You might wanna have that handy for the first time, but then you can just ignore it like every other manual after that. Okay, so ailerons, um, elevator and rudder. So you've got the roll, pitch and yaw. Okay, so we're gonna set up ailerons first. We're gonna associate it to switch F in my case. At the top setting, I'm gonna have the least expo. We'll do five, then we'll do 10, and then we'll do, whoops, then we'll do 20. So it's getting progressively more, and then I'm gonna drop the rates down. Okay, so looking at this again, it's uh, five, then 10, then 20. So you have less expo, which makes the stick more sensitive more expo, which makes the stick less sensitive, and then even less sensitivity with maximum output dropped down by 10%. Okay, so that gives us a middle ground to start with. That's what we're gonna do on all three axes for the beginning, okay? Then what we're gonna do is if we need to make an adjustment after our first maiden flight, we'll come down and we'll set, if we went to this, we'll set that to the new middle, and if we went to this, then we'll set that to the new middle and then we'll half and double, okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Basically what you're doing, excuse me, with the wrong flip of the switch, what you're doing is you're giving yourself an out. You always wanna give yourself an out so you can get your plane to the ground on a maiden. Maiden flights are the scariest flights for any pilot because you're basically the experimental pilot testing your hot glue joints and your wiring in the tail. <laughs> or if it's a dynam, everything. <laughs> okay, so we've got all that there. Okay, walking back. Oh, and by the way, um, as you guys may know, we work with BitGo Hobby and we work with Horizon and we work with XFly and we work with Banggood and we work with a bunch of different companies here. Um, but just to be clear, uh, BitGo has been so good to us that they have let us basically tell the truth about our experiences with Dynam and yet still uh, send different models like this for us to link to. 
So if you guys wanna help support our channel, that's one way you can do it. You can buy your transmitter from Horizon, you can buy your receivers and the batteries from Horizon, then you can buy your plane from wherever you wanna buy it from. This is a plug and fly, so you'll notice that we're using Horizon Hobby and we're working with BitGo on the plane. So that being said, I'm not trying to diminish any of the relationships we have, but we work with more than one company because we wanna be fully truthful, honest, and clear with you as the consumer. You get to decide where you're gonna spend your RC dollars, but we wanna give you guys the most broad range of choices to pick from. We're just helping you pick. You know, we're not saying this is the best plane or that's the best plane. I, I hate it when people ask me my favorite plane because I have too many of them to be favorites. I like types of planes, but really, I just want you to have an appropriate idea of what this plane is gonna do and whether or not it's gonna be good for a beginner or if it's gonna be good for a little bit more experienced pilot or if it's just total garbage. And also, we want you to know how it goes together. So that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. That's why we have a Patreon if you wanna support us in that way and not buy from our links or maybe if you're geo, you know, you're located in a place geographically where you can't buy from the links, First of all, you can buy from Horizon from Tower. We have both links, so you should be able to ship worldwide. Uh, if you're in Canada, you can ship from Horizon. Um, BitGo Hobby is North American distribution, so if you're looking for a way to get the other ones, we may have to work some of that out. But for now, the XFly uh, line is gonna be available from BitGo. So BitGo has been very good to us. They have let us tell the truth, which is important and critical. We don't work with companies that won't let us tell the truth. If they don't let us tell the truth, then we tell them to pound sand because that's what you should do. If you wanna work with companies that tell you you have to give good news or no news, then just let somebody else review it. We're gonna keep our integrity here and we want you guys to buy the best and sometimes that means maybe not buying a particular product. So, without further ado, we want you guys to know that we are very genuine on this channel. My enthusiasm is real. Mm -hmm. And when it's not real, you'll know. <laughs> okay, so coming back, because I fake it bad. All right, here we go, guys. We got a four minute timer. We've got throttle uh, cut that's working and we have uh, the timer started. So everything is good. We, have, uh, we haven't done any assignments for gear because we don't know what direction it's gonna be working yet. The output's always questionable on a plug and fly. But now we can scroll over to this menu, which is our monitor mode. Now I started my timer, so I'm gonna hit clear just so you can see that clears. This shows us what channel everything needs to be landed on, okay? That's why we have this intermediate step where we have to go to the transmitter and then back to the receiver and then back to the, you know. So we're gonna do that today just like we always do on plug and flies. So the next step is, of course, to wire up the plane. So we still have the hot glue gun going and we'll show you why in a minute. I can look at the monitor mode and I can see where everything plugs in. So the first things first, we're gonna plug in the throttle. The throttle is this one, presumably. It's the only one that's not labeled and we're gonna go into the second port, it's, uh, it's port one. This first one's the bind plug if you choose to use a bind and it says S plus and minus. So S is the white for signal, red is plus and black is minus. Now if this were a, this is a, a Futaba color code. If it was Hextronics then it would be this color, it'd be the, the yellow would be your signal, then red would be plus and brown would be minus. So they're very similar. It's very easy to tell. If you were colorblind, they'd probably look exactly the same. That was a joke. Probably make it a little challenging. I had an instructor in college that was colorblind and that's why he got out of network administration. I'm serious. Okay, ailerons. Okay, this would be why you don't use Crow because then you would have to split everything out of the breakout board. Now you can do that by the way but just be aware, it could be quite the pain in the butt. So ailerons are on, show the people, uh, channel two. Channel two. You can see channel one is throttle, then ailerons, then elevator. Okay, so channel two is ailerons, as prescribed but by this little plastic label, it says aileron. Very clearly marked, very nice labels actually. All right, so then what's next? We've been super impressed with everything on this plane so elevator far. Would be elevator three. is channel three. Um, I do like the breakout board in this instance. There are times I don't like breakout boards, particularly when I have a plane that I know I want crow or flaperons because the breakout boards can make for a bit of a pain in the butt. Can also just be not a, not a big issue too. Rudder is the next one, so that's channel four. Mm -hmm. Just remember that your orange or white goes up. And I'm just kind of sliding these leads back so that they get out of the way and you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so this is the next one, which is... Here would be channel gear. five. This is a super clean install. I'm really yes. happy with this. It's very nice. And when I say clean, I mean, I'm talking about like their install, not mine. <laughs> I've got a lot of hot glue involved. 
And then flaps, right? Mm -hmm. Hold the other left. Yep. Now, look how clean that is. Look. I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it in half. Actually, I'm going to do one zip tie. But first, I'm going to take hot glue and I'm going to go right here and just go smear it, smear it right here. Bloop, just like that and just like this. It doesn't need to be anything too fancy. And then if you have a little bump you don't like, that's another reason why I like the hot glue. Sorry, I bumped the mic, folks. You can just go and clean it up. That does look pretty nice. I'm happy with it. It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be to fly. But it's definitely better than a lot of planes I've seen. Mm -hmm. So now, I'm gonna do one zip tie. And why one zip tie, camera crew, would I do one? Why would I do only one? I don't know. I've never seen you only use one zip tie. Well, I would only use one if I can get away with it. Because I hate having a million zip ties in there. Yeah. But at the same time, it's really nice to have one zip tie to hold those together. I don't even really need this zip tie, but I'm gonna use one zip tie right here, and then, look at this. I'm gonna be able to twist this whole lot of them together, and then hide it underneath. Which is gonna look super, super sharp. Guys, I love it when a plan comes together. And uh, this flap label I wanna shoot through. This is one of the hardest things to film, uh, aside from fast flying planes that are 10 feet from our face. It's actually quite difficult to film this stage because my hands are constantly in the way and my camera crew and I usually don't get into too many big fights over who's in whose way because the reality is we're both kind of in each other's way and it is one of the more frustrating things to do, filming the builds. So just so you guys know, my camera crew is super sacrificial for you and she does a good job. I think she's worthy of praises and we really do appreciate her. By the way, we have a wedding anniversary coming up soon. Mm -hmm. We are getting to be old. I'm glad you remembered that earlier when I brought it up. Well, you brought it up. You said some cryptic message about like dinner on Saturday. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, because of like whenever our anniversary is. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, I mean, I didn't forget our anniversary because we talked about it. We were going to celebrate by building the Sirius. Right. Seriously. Seriously. Yeah, seriously, guys. When you're a Brian Phillips RC YouTuber, you get to celebrate your anniversary by building RC. That's when you know you picked right. I just... Check this out. Look, I'm picking up the plane, moving the whole thing by the receiver. That means that this thing is going to be stuck to the plane. Now, you probably wouldn't want to do that with a, uh, you know, like a gas plane because you get too much vibration back and your servos would probably burn themselves out, just so you know. I like that. That looks good. Really the wires good. aren't going to get in each other's way. We have tons of extra room. That's the great way to do it. Okay. So now we're ready to bind. So now I am going to grab the 50 C pack right here. And I am going to kick that thing out of the way. So I don't step on it. That would hurt way worse than Legos. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to drop this in with the non-wired end going forward. I love that they put that in a channel so you don't have to worry about it. Whew, this makes me a little nervous, like I'm not gonna be able to reach. Or it's gonna be perfect. I don't know yet, we'll find out. Oh, it's perfect. Are you kidding me? That never happens. You guys, like the fact that it's the right length is so amazing to me. Why is it such an amazing thing? in the RC industry that the strap is the right length. They actually know what type of battery I'm gonna be using. This is glorious. Because you, you wanna know what? When it's easy to put a battery in a plane, mm -hmm. you're more likely to fly it, you're more likely to enjoy your experience. Yep. I know it seems minor, but anybody who has an EDF jet knows exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's bind. So in order to bind, I have to turn off my transmitter or go into the bind mode. I don't like the bind mode. I've had nothing but problems with it, so I'm just gonna turn it off. It's not that big a deal. Okay, so just so you know, full disclosure, there's the pushy button. I'm pushing it. I'm clicking it. You can use the bind plug if you want. I don't care which way you do it, but I'm gonna bind it by pressing the button because it's more complicated. That was a hilarious joke. Everybody should be laughing right now. Oh, so cool. Okay, so the battery is in. I am going to now press this button, which is going to make the light flicker and flash. Okay. Now this is an AR637T. I don't need to hold it. Bind. 
button and this button to power it. Now I can let go of the power. It says binding. Bind failed. Bind failed. We bad. always fail the first time. I don't understand why. Don't freak out. If it doesn't work the first time, you have at least two more tries before it blows up. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. It doesn't actually blow up unless it's broken and then it blows up. Okay, so a little bit further away. Binding. Oh, come on. It's, it's being difficult now. Okay, so I have to turn this off. One of the reasons I'm not a big fan of the push button is because of this. It takes longer. Not a big deal, but it does. Okay, so we'll go this way. Got it. There we go. And then the light stops flashing, okay? DSMX, okay, now it's going through an auto configure. Okay, this is where you wanna be careful if it's a prop driven plane because when it's off, you don't know exactly what's gonna happen. Ooh, that's where you gotta be also kinda of careful. Okay, so I don't know where they're gonna be driven, so you have to be super careful that you're not gonna overdrive your servos into a weird position. Okay, so ailerons, elevator, rudder, steerable nose gear, we don't know yet. Okay, so just looking at our servos, the first thing we wanna address is flaps because the flaps are vulnerable, okay? So we're looking, we're in the middle setting and look where they are. Okay, that's gonna bring them up, so we're good there. So 100 plus 100 is good, okay? Minus 100 might be a little bit much, okay? So we're just gonna bring it back a little bit, okay? So there's, ooh, you see what I'm talking about? You hear the crispiness? You definitely do not wanna run those too far, okay? Okay, so that's the first, that's the first bad part of this plane I've found is the fact that it overdrives that far. Okay, so we're still good. So now I'm on this setting. What am I hearing? Oh, it's just the decal. The decal has a weird break. I'm gonna show you what I'm seeing. Okay, first things first. The battery's in, everything's installed. We could check the CG too. I'm gonna flip this plane over. I wanna show you what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna check the CG on the way. Oh, we we're pretty much already CG'd out. That is amazing. Okay, I gotta put that battery back just a hair, maybe a quarter inch and it'll be perfect. Okay, so check this out. One of the biggest problems you have with jets, you guys already know this, you can't get the stinking thing to CG. You have to move everything back as far as possible. This is the noise we're hearing right here. Look, right there. There's one decal, see it? Sorry, I pointed oh. it the wrong way. It's just a decal, folks. I thought it was broken or something. I'm gonna get the X-Acto knife and resolve that problem with the back edge of the X-Acto, careful camera crew. See this? I gotta push that down. Oh. Yep, so I'm going to bring the flaps up and then I'm gonna fix that little, little spot there. I'm gonna push it down. And if that doesn't stay, then we'll address it differently by cutting it. Jeez. All right, so take off flaps, landing flaps. My switches are backwards, so I'm just gonna walk to the center position. I'm gonna go to servo setup and I'm gonna click on travel, scroll to reverse, flip flaps, okay? So that's takeoff flaps, obviously it's not right. Landing flaps, oh yeah. It's just squishing the, it's just squishing the decal. Mm -hmm. I thought it was overdriving the servos. Whew. Okay guys, all right, so we're good. But we are just double checking that we're not hitting anything. It's just, just the decal. Whew, that made me nervous. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to flap system. That is a lot of throw, that's what I like. Now into the up position, we're gonna go to minus. And we're just gonna drive these until they're level. Now you'll see we're a little bit shy of level at a minus 100. So there's two ways to resolve that. One, we can either take this out and scooch it back, or we can try to overdrive the servo, which I'm gonna try. So I'm gonna go to servo setup, travel, and I'm gonna go to flaps. We're already in our fully retracted position, and I'm gonna see if I can go over 100. Yep, I can, and look at that. We got them nice and flush. Mm -hmm. That only took us about 15% extra. Okay, so I'm totally satisfied with that. Takeoff flaps are too far there. So I think, um, I think the deflection looks pretty even. Okay, so just looking from this angle, I'm just seeing if they're about even and they are. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my flap mode. Well, actually, I'll just do it in the servo setup. 
And I'm gonna go to here. I like the landing flap point, but I don't like the takeoff flap point. Okay, so takeoff flaps needs to be some function of less than that. So I'm gonna bring them up so they're, you know, like that. Okay, so you got takeoff flaps, you got landing flaps. They really get down there. Wow. Okay, cool. All right, so now let's talk about the rest of the control channels. We're obviously bound. Uh, I guess we could look at the gear while we've got it upside down. Let's okay. do that. Okay, so cycling gear for the first time, you don't know what condition it's in, so make sure you test. Okay, so the gear come down, steerable is working good. Look at this. Okay, so the steerable is working good. Doesn't look like a lot of movement though. Everything looks solid in there. It's just simple. That's the way I like it. And then those seem a little bit stiff, but I think they're gonna be good. It's gonna be good on the ground. Okay, so we've got gear. I want my gear to be the other direction. So I'm gonna flip that by going to servo setup, travel, scrolling over to reverse. I'm gonna reverse the gear switch. Okay, so then this is, that's the way I fly. And then that's the way I land. Okay, so that's set the way I like. Now let's look at the other control channels and see if we have our ailerons and everything. I'm just flipping this for, you know, filming reasons. I also wanna check the CG with the gear down. Okay, so elevator, that's backward. So I can scroll over to elevator, click it. There's up, there's down, and neutral is perfect, guys. That's amazing, we don't even have to change that. Mm -hmm. Okay, rudder's going backward. So I'm gonna switch that. Okay, so that's gonna yaw us this way, that's gonna yaw us that way. And checking the steerable, it is going the same direction, which is what you want, or, well, it's going opposite, actually, is what you want. Okay, <laughs> can you show them? <clears throat> okay, so I'm, Pulling to the left, pulling to the right. Okay, so we're good there. And where does that retract go? Am I gonna be able to, I gotta bring this forward just a hair so I can test them. Okay, so everything is working on the gear. Every control surface is going the correct direction. We have plenty of throw. It looks similar to what the manual calls out. I'm really happy with that. The only thing I don't have in here is a mix uh, from, oops, from flaps to elevator. Let's just throw in a little bit to make sure we've got some change of state. Yep, we do, it's dropping just a little bit. Those flaps look like they're deployed too much in my opinion. I don't know if I like the way that looks. I'm so, sure I've ever heard you say that. I know. Well, it's because they're like beyond 90. I'm just gonna walk them back in this menu. I mean, it's nice that you can drive them that far, jeez. That's only 30? Okay, so I'm gonna go back to 100. I'm gonna go back to 100 and I'm gonna walk into the flap system right here. That is just like really weird how far back. They give you tons of range. Mm -hmm. Okay, so walking out of the menu. So I have flight, takeoff flaps, landing flaps. I like it, that's better. I feel like that's better. We can always increase it later, but then we've got something that looks right. This LED is bright. I'm very yeah. happy with that. It is not dark in here right now. The sun is about ready to go over the top of a cool cloud. It's gonna be sweet. Okay, so I, I have to test the throttle. I'm sorry, I can't resist. Oh, okay. But I gotta be very careful because I don't wanna have to charge this back up a million times. Oh. Sounds good. Whoa, stuck in my shirt. It's gonna be loud. It's loud. Okay. Sorry, so, Esteban. Yeah, sorry, Esteban. All right, so now the next step is we are all set for all the forward programming. We have to do forward programming. That's our last setup. And so forward programming is also the most complicated part. And so we are going to turn the plane around so we can see everything. We're gonna do one last check. I know we've already done this twice, but I like to check things three times up, down. Right, left, roll left, roll right, flaps, flaps. Okay, so everything's set. We have Expo, we have everything. Okay, so now what we can do is we can scroll down to board programming. Now, let's do audio events first. Telemetry warnings. Let's do auto config. It should have already done it, but we'll just do once. Okay, so once it auto configures, it's gonna populate the data fields. Okay, so where's volts? So is it what, what type of volts? Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's set this, instead of 1S, let's set it to six. And let's, that's way too low. I want my warning to be like 
Ah, uh, hold on. I'm gonna use a calculator because I wanna think about this right. This is an EDF. You, you need to have a little power to get back to the ground. So if I'm at um, 3.4 volts times six, that's gonna be 20.4. Let's do that as our warning. Okay, so 20.4. 20, 20.4 is a good amount of power. You should be able to have at least one go around, okay? We can drop that down later. And then you can do a voice alarm and then you can change the status reports to off and warning reports to every 15 seconds, let's say. Because you do not want to get pilot fatigued by annoying British mm -hmm. lady, okay? Yeah. So every 15 seconds after I reach 20.4, it's going to give me voice updates. Now, the only problem with that is this is an EDF. So let's say I take off and I go like super conservative and go straight vertical for like five minutes. Okay, it's gonna like alarm almost immediately because you're gonna sag that whole pack is gonna drop. Okay, one of the best things about the G2 packs is that they really stay balanced nicely so you don't sag hardly at all until you're dead. So you need to be a little bit careful on that. Now, this is a G1 pack, so I think we're gonna do okay. All right, so walking back out of there, we actually do technically have a Vario as well. Okay, a Vario of course is going to tell you the up and down change and you can make it boop, 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 beep, boop, 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 boop. And I don't think I have that on. So I think by default it's off. If you wanna turn it on, I've assigned them to switch C in another video. I can't remember what plane that was, but I don't really care about the Vario right now. I don't plan on slope soaring this plane. But maybe we will. Anyway, so getting back to the point, now we're gonna go to forward programming. Of course, I wanna click on the right one. So now it's connecting. So, gyro settings, click into gyro setting. First time setup, make sure the model has been configured. It has all the controls are the right direction. Can you make sure the saturation is good here mm -hmm. and people can see that and read it? Because otherwise this is a tough part to figure out on your own. Okay, so clicking next. Any changes need to be run through this again. Okay, set model level, continue. You can also set it manually. Okay, now I'm gonna put it on its nose and click continue. Okay, so I prefer to, to put it on its nose um, in a spatially similar place. I don't wanna like go down to the basement and do this step because it'll confuse things. Whoops. I'm gonna click continue and it tells me the orientation of my receiver. So it says the air, 637 should be forward and the spectrum logo should be up at the top. So let's see if that is true in reality. Looks correct to me. So the receiver is aware of its position in the plane. So now it's going to be able to make decisions on what direction to correct for AS3X and or safe ultimately, but safe isn't set up yet. Okay, so we're gonna click down to continue. And then we're gonna to go to the gain channel select, and this is where you can tell it what channel, it gives you an update. I wanna to go to right knob, which is auxiliary three. And then I'm gonna click apply. This is gonna reboot things. So this is where your prop could jump and cut your hand off. So be careful if it's a prop driven plane, or if you have your hand slithered all the way in there, that would be a bad time to do that. So you might wanna pull any long appenditures out of the EDF thrust tube. Just to be clear, that's where the EDF blows, not where other things thrust. So, receiver is rebooting. Okay, click. All right, we're going back into forward programming. So now let's go to gyro settings. Let's do F mode setup, let's do it. Okay, so now F mode's here. So. Okay. Auxiliary two. Okay. See how it changes? Yay, we did it right this time. So AS3X is active on one of these. I'm gonna make it active. It, there is no other choice yet. You have to do it later. First time save setup. We already did this. I don't know why you have to do this again, but I always step through each menu. Click, whoops. Then it puts something in. So this is with the plane level. Level is what level is now. You can change that if you find that the safe corrects you down 
or corrects you up or corrects you to the side or corrects you to the side. So that's where you would relearn your position. This evidently is a pitch of one, whatever that means. Okay. So. Okay, so now on safe mode three, I want that to happen. On two, I want nothing. On one, I want AS3X only, okay? But we're in safe setup, so we don't need to worry about that. Now I'm gonna apply, it's gonna reboot. This is where it'll cut your hand off or whatever you've stuck down the thrust tube. Pull it out for a second, just in case. This is also a good time to secure your plane in case it would blow. Receiver is rebooting. Click for menu, okay? All right, good, so we're done. So now we can walk back in yet a third time. Don't worry, you get fast with it after you've done it a few times. Gyro settings. Now let's go to F mode setup, check this out, look. See, AS3X is active, AS3X is active, and then safe is active. So watch this, on this I'm gonna inhibit it. So now I have flight mode one, flight mode two, and flight mode three. Now let's walk back. And let's go to the AS3X settings and let's go to gains. You see how it says one time? You can change this as fast or as much as four times or you can change it as low as less, but it does this weird thing where it fights you. So yes, you can go below it, but I'm gonna set it to one to start and let's look what one looks like. Throttle cuts off. You notice the throttle is not gonna work when you're in forward programming, okay? But you know what will work? AS3X, okay? So normally you have to energize, or you have to give your ESC 25% or greater. Okay, I'm looking up is up, down is down, right is right, left is left, whatever direction that is. I'm looking at the ailerons, up is up, up is up. So I move the surface and I watch for the upward movement. You can't see because it's a very small correction. I have gain here, so now I'm gonna demonstrate with noise. Similar movement. Gains down, gains up, gains in the middle. Okay, now watch this. If you can't see and you're trying to correct, check this out. Click on 1x, go to 4x. Now turn your gains all the way up. Now watch. Aileron up, aileron down. Aileron up, aileron down. Rudder toward me, rudder toward the camera crew. Rudder that way, rudder that way. Okay, elevator up, elevator down. You can see it, right? Okay, see how it's going that way? It's resisting the environmental impact. It's resisting up, it's resisting down. It's resisting this roll, it's resisting that roll. Okay, so now I can set that back to one. Now keep in mind, if you're four times, you can still go four times all the way to nothing. Okay, now if you don't have a knob, for instance, you have an NX6. You can set that to a three position switch and have 100% on, 50% on, and 0%. Or some variant of it. You could have like 25%, um, you know, 70%, 90%, or whatever. It doesn't have to be the settings I tell you. Okay, so now let's look at this together. So now we're gonna capture the gyro gains. Okay, so it populates those values. It's gonna populate those values, there's nothing on. And it's populating the values. Now we can walk out. We're pretty much done. So now let's walk all the way out and we're gonna test, we're gonna clear our timer. Throttle cuts on, throttle cuts off. A little bit of throttle, throttle cuts back on. Let's see if AS3X is correcting us. Okay, so right, left, up, down, roll, roll, roll. Whatever direction I'm going, I'm looking that the control surface goes the same direction. If it's going the opposite direction, if your aileron goes the opposite direction, when you end up rolling from wind, your plane will continue rolling until it crashes. Okay, it's like a self-induced crash. That's why you have to double and triple and quadruple check AS3X. If you're not familiar with it, get somebody to go over it with you, but double, triple, quadruple check, do not crash a brand new plane over that. Okay, elevator up, elevator down. Y'all left, y'all right, roll left, roll right. Flaps on, flaps on. Okay, everything's working, the correction is correct. Meaning when I do takeoff flaps, the elevator drops just a little bit and then it drops a little bit more. We may actually find that that's the wrong direction. Sometimes jets 
but I don't think so on this plane. Sometimes jets with that extra lift on the body, it changes the aerodynamic behavior of flaps. Like for instance, the Habu, we had to correct the other direction. It's kind of weird. Okay. All right. That being said, everything is working. This plane is ready to fly with the exception of let's see if safe works. So we're in AS3X. So listening carefully. Off. Now safe. Now, how do you tell if you're in safe? Flip the plane over on its belly. Which way is faster? That way or that way? Okay. It's trying to get you level and then the ailerons level out. Now look at the elevator. The elevator is going to try to level the plane. It's going to try to bring it up to level. Okay. So everything's working on safe and ASTRX is also active with safe. Okay. So just listening. Games down, but safe is still correcting. So test that in AS3X. Just listening and down and up. Okay. So we're going to put it in the median point. So we have an out, we have an out up and we have an out down and we have an out off. Okay. So everything is tested. Everything is vetted. I'm ready to fly this plane. So guys, if you liked what you saw here, this is just one video. We literally have thousands of videos. Okay. We don't just have the 15 most common videos or the most popular jets or whatever it is. We have thousands of videos for your viewing pleasure and you can spend several different life sentences in prison <laughs> and you could watch the videos maybe halfway through. So I would encourage you if you're in there, if you're in the slimer for a long time, watch the whole videos. If you're out on in the public, then, uh, you know, maybe you watch three quarters of the video, but anyway, you'll get a gold star. If you watch them, this plane is going to be awesome. I can already tell it's going to be good. Everything feels rock solid. I think it's well designed. It went together actually quite a lot better than I thought it was going to go. And honestly, the only issue we had in the build was trying to get that servo plug in. And that was super easy. Once we got it in there, it was fine. Uh, in terms of CG, let's look at the CG real quick before we actually totally close this out. I'm going to lay this down because I can. I'm going to actually slide the battery back. I have it all the way at the bulkhead right now. It'd be nice if we could fly it there. Um, I'm going to just slide it back so it's at the front of the strap. Let's see how that, this is a 5050C, okay? 50C, 5006S. Smart pack gen one in this case. Okay. Just feeling. Okay. So we're just a little bit tail heavy on the front hole and we are probably bounced out on the back hole. I think that's a safer spot to start with a jet. And I know some of you are thinking, but you don't want tail heavy planes fly once and nose heavy planes fly that or whatever. I don't know. Really the whole gist of it is if your plane is nose heavy, it's overstable, which means you're going to need a lot of elevator to correct and jets fly fast. So you don't want to necessarily have that. Understable planes tend to have too much elevator control and they're pitch sensitive and they're very hard. We have stabilizer, we have skill and we have uh, safe. So really between those three factors, a tail heavy plane, if it's severely tail heavy, will overwhelm any of those factors and you will crash anyway. But if you're just on the border of being a little bit tail heavy, you know what you can do? You can flare, which means you can slow the plane down. Okay. Flaps may not require that in this plane, but we're going to find out. So I'm going to start with that battery about like that. And I'm going to tighten these leads down just a little teeny bit more. Oh boy. And you know what we're going to do? We are going to be good. We are going to be good little RC ears and we are going to check our voltages and we're going to see how much we have to top this thing off. Oh, okay. So let's look at that real quick. Guys, smart batteries have been really good to us. We really like them, but there are other options in the market. I understand this, but I'm going to show you this right now because I want you to see this is a gen one, meaning it has a balanced lead. The gen twos don't even have a balanced lead. Okay. So we're at 4.15. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug this in. It's going to auto automatically start charging at the pre-designated rate. In our case, it'd be five amps and five amps would be the one C rating. Okay. So as you can see, it has started charging. It's at 97% charge and this is going to top it off. Now you can scroll down here and you can see what the balance is, which is really nice. It's always balancing during charge or discharge. And then of course you can see the impedance between the cells and the internal resistance in this case. And you can see an approximate time to full charge here. So six minutes, to full charge. And if you look up here, you can see where the sun is. Okay. The sun is 
dangerously low to the horizon. <laughs> so we need to hurry up and charge this faster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pause, we'll get things clean, we'll get ourselves in position, and we're gonna film this flight. Guys, if you haven't already bought one of these serious planes from XFly yet, definitely check the link in the video description below. If you're serious about buying one of these, please do help support the channel. Buy it from our links, they send us a small commission. You get the plane for the same price, whatever bonuses, feed, um, you know, cash back, whatever it is that you do. You can still do that and you'll be supporting our channel. We feel like the best way you can support our channel is of course to watch the videos and buy stuff from the links. But if you don't like buying from the links for whatever weird reason, or maybe you wanna buy from somebody else's links, then do us a favor and support us on Patreon. That way you can support us financially if you'd like. Um, we actually started the Patreon because people have been asking for years and we finally decided to go ahead and turn that on so that people have a way to do that. We think the best way by far is to just buy the stuff from the links because you're buying it anyway. Might as well buy it from the link, support us, and then you can uh, give us that little pat on the back financially. Now also, if you wanna support us, you can buy from Horizon Hobby for Spectrum stuff like this, and you can buy from BitGo Hobby for this. Or if you like BitGo Hobby for Dynam uh, receivers and things like that, we have a master link up at the top. It is a little bit harder on some companies have different link structures. Just follow the master link and buy what you're gonna buy. We'll get credit for it, and that's the way it works, okay? so just go and get this thing uh, through the link at the very top of the description. We always have the current plane, we have the current battery, we have the current receiver and current transmitter on a plug and fly configuration. This is a, obviously a plug and fly or a plug and play. Some manufacturers call it a plug and play. And in this case, we are going to link to the AR637T. We'll also link to the 631 because we feel like you could probably do this just fine on that. Um, also, if you want, you scroll a little bit further down, we have all the rest of the planes we review. Sometimes we do planes and we show them and you're like, you know what, I love that plane, but I just don't think I'm ready for it. You might not be. Maybe you want the Habu. Maybe you want the Dynam version. Um, maybe you want another plane altogether. Either way, we have all those links down, down below. All you have to do is click the video description and you can scroll down. And if you don't prefer any of those, we also have a PayPal account if you want to support us financially. We think it's a little weird, but at the same time, we're offering it because at this point, we are spending so much time on this channel, we would like to be able to spend more. <laughs> so if you're, if you're picking up what I'm laying down, we're gonna have to increase that a little bit before we can do that. So for now, we're asking you to take part in Brian Phillips RC and be a partner with us in that way. And as we partner with more and more companies, it's going to help us get a little bit more flexibility in that arena. And we also wanna bring you guys the best footage and we wanna bring you, um, as we progress and get better at flying and better at setting things up, we're gonna bring you along with us. We want you to be flying. We don't want you to just watch. Don't just watch this channel. You know, we want you to be flying. So watch, learn, and then apply it in your own life. Learn how to do it. Learn how to use these things. They're expensive and they are so powerful. The tools that we have at our disposal today I mean, they're amazing compared to what we had just 10 years ago. And they actually work. A lot of these technologies helped me to learn to fly. I learned to fly on safe and you can too. If you don't have some grumpy old guy at a flying field uh, that isn't willing to help you, then get safe, okay? I'm not saying you're gonna learn in this plane, you probably shouldn't, that'd be a bad call. But maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll get this thing in the air. It's a great trainer, I doubt it though. So that being said, those are the ways you can support us. We really appreciate you. We have the world's best audience here on Brian Phillips RC, and we would be nowhere without you. And of course, the camera crew. Thanks, camera crew. We appreciate you too. Come back for more. Okay, so I forgot one thing. It says flight mode one, flight mode two, flight mode three. I wanna change that right now. So I'm gonna click into the function list, go down to audio events. Then I'm gonna go to either switch changes um, or flight modes, flight modes in this case. So flight mode one, it's gonna speak flight mode one. I'm gonna scroll way down. I want it to say AS3X. It's like all the way at the end. By the way, you can change these things. I haven't done a lot of work on them, but you can. Okay. So once you get down here to the bottom, there's one that says AS3X. See, they're safe, so I need safe for the other one. There's auto, there's AS3X mode, okay. and I don't really care what the thing says. Then you just flip the switch. And I don't know if they have one that says like unstabilized, but that's basically we have stabilizer off. Ooh, did I see one that said off? 
I'm just trying to read as we go. Gyro off. Okay, so we're not there. There's a lot of different, uh, different things you can make it say. Stability mode. Hover mode, self-level mode, stabilizer mode. That's simple. Experienced mode. I guess we could say experienced mode too. We'll pause and find it and come right back. Okay, so I found one that said off. And then we'll change that to safe. So we just scroll. I kind of wish that there was an easier way to scroll. There might be another way, but I haven't figured it out. Oop, there we go. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. I think you're just Oh, I went too out. far. Stagility? What? Okay, so now we're set and this thing is ready to fly. So guys, hopefully that tip helps you and we hope you liked seeing this serious fly. We're excited to see it, so stay tuned.